Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dinners with Donna. I'm Donna. Um, I have a show every other Sunday. For those of you who don't know, welcome on in. Um, hi to all my viewers who are returning. Um, I hope you guys are doing great today. We're having some kind of audio issue. We're working on it. We always have something going on here. But um, welcome in, everyone. Um, hi, Richard. Hi. <laughs> I think we've got it fixed now. Okay, so... Welcome in to all my members, my channel members. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you so much. And for my members, um, I forgot to tell you, I've got some magic mail that's going to be going out within the next couple of weeks uh, to you guys. So look for that. And um, to my moderators with the blue wrenches, thank you so much for being here and keeping the chat family friendly, clean, and safe, and a happy environment for everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Today, Richard, we're going to be cooking everything with zucchini. So we're going to start with appetizer and then entree, side dish, dessert, the whole shebang. We're actually going to start with our cake because it takes the longest, but we're going to make an entire zucchini meal. <laughs> but um, I had some magic mail, so I just wanted to go over uh, that really quick with you guys. There's only three things, so it shouldn't be that long. But I got this awesome letter with... Uh, stickers i got um anna and um ariel from my good friend joey from it's joey's world joey um i love you so much and your letters always brighten my day uh thank you so so much uh for taking the time to hand write me these wonderful letters um they always make me smile so thank you so much okay i'm trying to get that back i can't get it in the envelope <laughs> and then i got this beautiful card from our good friend, uh, Brandy, Disney Up Boiler Up. Brandy, I finally got your card. I don't know why it took so long to get here, but it's here. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for thinking of me. She always sends the most inspiring um, cards and with the most sweet messages inside. And I just really appreciate it. I love my magic mail. When you guys send me cards and things, it just makes my day so much better. So thank you so much, Brandy. We love you. And the last one is from our good friend, Scarlett Penford. Um, I love Scarlett. If you recall, she's the one who gifted me the beignet mix. So when we made those Mickey beignets, that's thanks to Scarlett. And she got me this really cute and very appropriate with the pie um, fall card, celebrating and welcoming fall. And just because, and I love just because cards because you're never expecting them. And they're just so nice to get. And it's so nice to be appreciated and loved. And I thank you so much, Scarlett. You're such a good friend. So thank you so much. Okay, how are we doing? You look concerned. Well, we got a text from Magical News Live, member for 14 months. It said, what's this button? Oh, thanks, Nikki. <laughs> thank you for being a channel member. Yes, that's an awesome message. You got me back because I got you with one. So thank you so much for being a member. I appreciate you. And, and you know that. So thank you so much. Um, but how's should we do a chat check first and then get into cooking, or what do you think, Richard? Okay, he said let's start the cake. Okay, so I preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and we are making a dark chocolate zucchini bunt cake. Okay, so I'm going to go over the ingredients with you, and um, then we'll get into making the cake. So for the cake, we're going to need three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter softened. I'm going to be honest, I always use salted butter. Um, I know people say don't do it. Um, I like the salted butter, so that's what I use, but feel free to use unsalted, salted, whatever makes you happy. Um, one cup of granulated sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, three large eggs. I'm going to use egg beaters. Um, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and you guys always know I amp up the vanilla, so and a half a cup of buttermilk, three cups of finely shredded zucchini. Now, I will uh, tell you that you need to shred your zucchini way ahead of time. I did mine on Friday, and what I did was I sprinkle it with just a little bit, not a lot, of salt. Um, it draws out the moisture because you don't want your cake to be really soggy, um, but you do want it moist, which is what the zucchini does. It provides a very moist cake, and you don't really taste the zucchini as much as you will with chocolate. So it's a good way to sneak veggies in on your kids. But um, I started drying the zucchini out on Friday. I um, shredded it in my food processor. Another good tip, 
took me seconds to do it. Um, then I put it in a colander lined with paper towels. Um, if you have a nice like flower sack uh, towel, that clean towel, of course, you can line it with that and just, you gotta get all the extra moisture out. I let mine sit for about four hours before I squeezed all the moisture out and I went through um, like three iterations before I got as much of the moisture out as I could. Then you can store it in your fridge for up to like a week or so um, after it's shredded or cut. So you're good there because there's really no acid. Um, it's very low um, in there. So you're not going to get browning and all that kind of stuff from your zucchini. So it's okay to do it ahead of time. So I did it ahead of time. And then we've got uh, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a uh, half a cup of dark cocoa powder. Now I could not find dark cocoa powder at my store, so I'm just using regular cocoa powder. So we'll see how it comes out. Um, I'm gonna think the cake's gonna be just a little bit lighter in color, but it should still really taste good. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one cup of mini chocolate chips. Now, after it cools down, we're gonna glaze it with a glaze mixed with um, semi-sweet chocolate chips, which we're gonna melt down, uh, heavy whipping cream, and two tablespoons of mini chocolate chips for garnish. So basically what we're making is kind of a ganache glaze for the top of the cake. So, okay, with all that said and done, I've got my mixer ready because we're gonna be using the sand mixer to mix the cake. And then I've got all my ingredients here, my cocoa, cinnamon, cinnamon and vanilla, and my nutmeg, and my baking soda, and my baking powder. And I forgot to spray my pan, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna grab my best friend, Pam. Cook's best friend. Keeps everything from sticking to your pan. You wanna spray it really generously because I've got this um, bunt pan and it's got a lot of grooves and crevices and you want your cake to come out and not stick to the pan. Um, hopefully it will work, it usually does, but I really wanna spray it well. Okay, and then I got Pam on my hands, so I'm gonna wash my hands really, really quick. Because it makes your hands pretty slippery. But I will give you guys a tip too. Um, if you're working with anything like sticky and you're not using your kitchen gloves or anything, you can spray your hands with Pam, like if you're used working with dough, and then it won't stick to your hands as much. It's a little bit neater than flour. And then just use your dish soap like Dawn uh, the non, with the non-greasing agent uh, to cut all that out of your hands when you wash them. So that's another tip. Okay. I got all my stuff here. I'm gonna to have to grab some other things, I think, because I don't have my zucchini. And, oh, I'm running out of room here. Let's see. I'm gonna put the pan over here until we mix, just so I have a little bit of room. And I think I'm gonna turn my mixer because, and go this way, Richard, because that way I can tilt the head up. Okay, well, I'm gonna fix that in a second. And my fridge is very full because I did a lot of prep work ahead of time um, with this. And I said buttermilk too, I believe. So we need the buttermilk. I think I have everything now. If I forgot anything, I'll have to go back and get it. That's okay. Okay, so we have our buttermilk here. And nope, that's the wrong one. And see, this is why I label them. I have shredded zucchini for two things. So this one says fritters, which we will be making later. So see, good thing I didn't put that in there. Okay. So that means that this one should be for the cake. And yes, it says cake on it. How about that? And this is why I use sticky notes when I'm doing it prep work because see, it says cake. So now we're good. All right, so in a bowl, 
here. I already sifted my two cups of flour, so now I'm gonna add the one half cup of, which I have here, I did it already so I didn't get messy, of the cocoa. And we're also going to add um, the baking powder, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon and nutmeg. And I have that, where did I put it? Salt. All right, I have it somewhere. I pre-measured. I don't know where I put it. So I'll just measure again. It'll turn up somewhere. Hmm, that's so weird. Oh well. Ugh. Okay. So I'm going to put in my salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And now the salt is a teaspoon. So get my teaspoon out. Okay. Well, I'm not in there yet, so I'm just, I'm actually just sifting. Can I see the bowl? Yeah. Okay. When I get to the mixer, I'll just move it around. But right now I need to sift, so I'll just do that first. Okay, so that was our teaspoon of salt. We need doo -doo -doo -doo, two teaspoons of baking powder. One. There we go. Two. I'm done with that. Okay. Then we have our baking soda is one teaspoon. There we go. And then our cinnamon and our nutmeg. And our cinnamon and our nutmeg are a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And um, I have a feeling this is going to have like kind of an autumnal kind of feel. So it's perfect for this time of the year. So there's our cinnamon. I always say it like that. I know it's cinnamon. I'm just being silly. Okay. And then a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Half of that. There we go. Perfect. And now we're done with all of that. So when we're baking, I'll put all this stuff away. And that will be one less thing we have to worry about. So now I'm just going to sift all of this together with the flour. And then we're going to set it aside while we cream our butter and sugar. And when we cream our butter and sugar, I can move this bowl out of the way so we can turn the mixer so they can see. And just be careful because when you're doing things like this, um, especially with the cocoa, it can, and flour, it can like go everywhere. So just do it gently. Um, I'm just gently banging it against my hand. Um, you know, if you don't slam it, cause it'll, it'll fly everywhere. And that'd be a mess. I don't think Richard would be happy if that happened. Cause I'd make him clean it up. <laughs> right, Richard? Sure. You sounded like Liam. Sure. Liam would help me. He's my little buddy. And the reason we're doing this is to get any lumps. You'll have a beautiful, nice, smooth um, cake batter, which is what we want. You don't want lumps and bumps, and you don't want to take a bite of your cake and have a um, bitter bite of cocoa powder or flour. That's never pleasant. So. And then once this is done, I'm going to get just a fork and mix it together so everything's incorporated pretty well. Hi, um, I love pumpkin bars um, and anything apple. Those are my two favorite fall flavors. I love apple cider donuts that you get from the farm stands at this time of the year. Um, pumpkin, any, I love pumpkin and apple. Those are my two favorite fall flavor profiles. So anything that incorporates those, I'm down with. I like a good Dutch apple pie. Um, we have a local uh, frozen custard place I really love. You guys maybe heard me talk about it before. It's called Abbott's Frozen Custard. And um, we have one of them here, um, not too far from our house. And at this time of the year, they have pumpkin, 
uh, frozen custard. They also have uh, fresh from a uh, local farm apple cider donuts that they cut in half and make us uh, like an ice cream sandwich with um, vanilla frozen custard in between. So, so good. They also have um, apple cider, uh, sparkling apple cider floats, which I think is a neat idea for here in Florida since it's so hot. Okay, so now see, we have these residual junky things in here. They're not going through even with my fork pushing it through the sieve. So this little bit, we're just gonna discard. So there we go. Not to worry. So we're gonna mix this well together. Okay. And like I said, this is a really great way to get um, veggies snuck into your kids. Because you're going to get, uh, like, there's what? Three cups of zucchini in this cake? Yeah, three cups of zucchini. That's a lot of zucchini for a dessert. Okay, so now, can I see? This is what it looks like once it's incorporated. Now, had I been able to find the dark chocolate, uh, the dark cocoa powder, this would be a lot darker, but not to worry, it's gonna turn out fine. All right, now we can mix. Now let me see if I can turn this so it'll. There we go, we good? Okay, so we're gonna take our three quarters of a cup of butter, right there. I'm just gonna throw that away real quick. I like to clean as I go. I don't mean to leave you guys, but I'm just one of those people I like to clean as I go. Okay, so we have a cup of regular granulated sugar and a half a cup of um, firmly packed light brown sugar that I already pre-measured in my uh, cup here. There we go. So we're gonna put this in here. Basically, we're just gonna clean this mixture together. Okay. And you know my rule. What do we always do, Richard? Start on what speed? Fast as you can. No. We start on a low speed. And we're gonna just cream this like you're creaming anything here. And let me see what we're doing. Okay, we did that, and then. Yes, I'll make you some of the, my peanut butter and jelly bars. How's that? Or s'mores bars? What do you think, Nikki? All right, so um, let's see. We're creaming this, then we're going to add the eggs. So now we need. I thought I said three eggs. Yes, I did. So I'm going to get my measuring cup while this is creaming. And we need three quarters of a cup because each egg beater's egg is a quarter of a cup. So we're going to do that. Now, you can also use regular eggs, but as you know, um, I recommend when you're using regular eggs to break them into a bowl so that you make sure you don't have any shell in them before you dump them in. And I would dump, incorporate them one at a time. And I think I'm still going to do that. I'll do it a quarter cup of, at a time of the egg mixture. Okay, so that's our eggs here. I'm gonna see, yeah, it's getting there. Now I think it's, see the sugar in it is kind of like blended into the butter so it's not gonna make a mess now. I can go a little bit faster. We're gonna get it nice and fluffy. It's looking really good. Okay, so we're gonna add the eggs and the vanilla. And I'm gonna do this just a little bit at a time. One. Two. And this is just a typical way to make a cake. You do the wet ingredients and then the dry ingredients and sugars are always considered a wet ingredient. Um, so that's why they go in here with the butter and not with the flour. 
Okay. I'm just going to give this a quick rinse because we're going to need a bit more eggs later for another recipe. Okay. So now we're going to also add our vanilla. And as you guys know, I eyeball. One, two. There. About three. I put about three, three and a half teaspoons. I like vanilla a lot. <laughs> and I always use pure vanilla extract. Um, instead of the um, flavored, be careful with that um, because it's, it's just so much better to use the pure vanilla extract in your cooking. Um, it doesn't have anything added to it. It's just pure vanilla and not any preservatives, additives, all that junk. So, and it, the, I find the imitation vanilla kind of has an aftertaste and I don't like that. So, okay. So we've got our eggs and vanilla, and then we did that. We did the dry ingredients, and so now we're going to measure out our buttermilk. And our buttermilk, I believe, was a third of a cup. I'm just going to refer back to my recipe, half a cup. Okay, so we're going to measure half a cup of buttermilk, guys. Okay, I got my buttermilk. And I found this, because I don't use buttermilk very often, so I found this nice little, like, pint of buttermilk, so I don't have a whole lot of it. I'll probably use this in, like, mashed potatoes or something, the leftovers. But here we go. And then we're going to alternate the dry ingredients that we sifted together with our uh, buttermilk. So I'm going to put the buttermilk away, because that needs to stay in the fridge. Okay. So now I'm going to turn this off a little bit. Oops, my board moved. Oh, it's spinning. Okay. So now we're going to put some of the dry ingredients and do it very gingerly, which means very carefully. Got a little flour that didn't mix in well. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this, probably like a third of it. That's about right. And then we're going to put this in. And then we're going to put about a third of our buttermilk in. Yep. And you want it to mix really well. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to put a third of our, really? I ran out of hands. <laughs> okay, a third of our buttermilk. Okay, no, because see it splashed up on the side and I knew it would. That's what happens when you add a liquid to the, to the mix there. And I'm, I'm going to, like, because we didn't have dark cocoa powder, I'm just going to call this a chocolate zucchini bundt cake instead of dark chocolate because it's obviously not dark um, in color. But it's going to be, the taste is going to be incredible. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go a little bit faster and get it all mixed in. Okay. Now I'm going to add some more. Our flour and cocoa and all that good stuff. Okay. There we go. Cocoa's flying. <laughs> and I have it on the lowest speed. That's funny. Okay, there. Now it's incorporating. This is looking really yummy, you guys. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more of our buttermilk. Put it on low.
And while that's mixing, I'm just going to run and put the cinnamon and all this stuff away because it's taking up a lot of room on my counter and I need more counter space. Okay. Maybe powder, cinnamon, vanilla, cocoa powder, and baking soda. There we go. Good. Now we have a lot more room. Okay. That looks good. Okay. So now we're going to add the remainder of our, um, this is what's left of our flour, cocoa, powder, and all that stuff. The baking soda, baking powder, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, all that good stuff. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So now we're going to do this. As the cocoa flies everywhere. <laughs> and that's the lowest speed, too. So that's why I mean, you got to be careful. You don't want stuff. Imagine if you put it on the highest speed, if it's doing that at the lowest speed. Richard, you, your, your hair wouldn't be gray anymore. <laughs> It'd be all natural. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to, I'm not even going to stop the machine. I'm just going to add the rest of the buttermilk. I'm going to rinse the cup out because, like I said, I'm going to be using this again in another recipe. But I'm using basically the same thing I put in here. So you don't need to, you know, give it a good wash. Just a good rinse is fine for now. Okay. Get this really good and mixed. All right. It almost looks like frosting at this point, but I will say, even though I took out a lot of the moisture of the zucchini, it is going to add moistness to the cake, like I said. So, not to worry about this. Do you have a question? You look confused. Oh, you want to look the batter, the beater. Okay. Richard's actually looking in the back. Peter, guys. All right, what do you think? It's a good chocolate cake so far. Very good. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we are going to fold in our zucchini. And I believe it's a cup. I just want to double check. Yes, one cup of mini chocolate chips. So here we go. And again, I've got the right one. It says cake. And for my young friends in the audience, this is why you have uh, post-it notes when you're over 40, because you forget everything. <laughs> At least I do. Thank you for pointing that out, Richard. Got some extra zucchini that flew the coop here. There you go. No, this is the only recipe with the um, mixer, so go for it. Okay. So now I'm going to take this off of the um, machine. And what I'm going to do is move my uh, base back there so I can mix this for you guys. I'm going to unplug. And we're on the move. Oh. Maybe heavy. Okay. Back you go into your little corner. All right. I got chocolate on me. I'm going to wash my hands so I don't get chocolate all over me. I don't know why I have something stuck in my throat, so I'll take a drink too. All right. So we've got our zucchini in here. I'm going to add also a cup of the mini chocolate chips, but I'm going to take a drink because 
I don't know why my throat is dry and I'm feeling like I have a tickle in my throat. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Okay, we got a $5 super chat from CH. Oh, CH, you're so kind. Oh. Thank you so much, CH. And it's always so nice to have you join us. And that was very generous of you. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Okay. So here, this is my one cup measure, by the way. I'm going to go in. I like to be generous with the chocolate chips. Okay. So now the rest of this bag is going to go into our ganache. And if we need, find that we need more chocolate chips, which I don't think we will, but should we find that we do, um, I have just regular semi-sweet chocolate chips that we can use, so not to worry. Okay. I need to get my rubber spatula here. I think I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit more sturdy. Okay. Here we go, guys. We're going to just gently fold everything in. We're going to have a beautiful zucchini cake. And just so everyone knows, I, I have a five quart um, stand mixer. So anything smaller than that is going to probably not yield this cake very well. So I would say you need at least five to um, eight quarts of a stand mixer if you're going to make it in the stand mixer. Of course, you can make it. Um, without a sand mixer also, so don't feel you have to. And it's going to take a while to incorporate everything into here. Maybe more chips. <laughs> Got that right, sister. <laughs> okay. Nice. I'm going to get to the bottom. Okay, I think we're well incorporated now. Um, we must be because, look at my hand. <laughs> I get into my work. <laughs> okay, Richard. This is safe to eat, guys, raw, because we use the pasteurized egg product. But I want Richard to just have a little, I'm going to try it too. See what we think. Mmm. Even with the zucchini, it's good. I mean, raw zucchini. It's going to taste great once it's cooked. It's yep. But with more chocolate chips. Okay. So now we're going to put this into our prepared pan. Um, I'm going to wash my hands because I'm all chocolatey. I don't know why this is getting all over me. Messy. Okay, hopefully this is the most messy of the recipes, <laughs> or else we're starting out with a bang. Okay, so I'm just going to scoop it in here. It's, it's like I said, it's thicker, much thicker than a traditional cake batter. It's not thin, so you need to spread it out. It's almost, I would say, kind of like between a brownie and a quick bread consistency, if you know what I mean. Um, And just try to get it into the pan evenly. And I'll clean up my pan um, a little bit. Put that more there. I'm sorry, my board is sliding around today. I don't know why it's doing that. It usually stays put for me, so. Might have to put a towel under it. Usually I don't, but it's acting funny today. The other thing, was there supposed to be oil in this cake? Nope. I'm just double checking because it is rather a thick batter, um, but I think this is how this cake is supposed to be. Um, you're relying, instead of oil and um, stuff like that, 
because we did put butter in the cake, but usually I put water or oil or something in here. Um, I'm thinking the zucchini is going to draw out some moisture and make the cake a little less dense. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But it looks yummy. It tastes yummy. Don't you think, Richard? Yep, it does. And that's raw. So imagine what it's going to taste like cooked in frosting. Very chocolatey. Very chocolatey. Okay. I'm going to spread this around. I try to get as much out of the bowl as I can. And that's why I use the rubber spatula, the silicone, because it does scrape the bowl really nicely and gets every little bit out of there. As you can, I'll show you as soon as I'm done. That's pretty much the last of it. See, we got pretty much all of it out. Yes? You could, but it would probably mess with the texture of it because you want it to be soft. And I think the dehydrator might make it a little hard, like a chip kind of thing, almost like um, veggie straws, if you've ever had those, which are super good. But um, that's what I'm thinking. Want this for a treat? <laughs> All right. Yummy. I have to say from the um, uncooked batter we, we tasted, which is safe, by the way, I'll reiterate, because we use pasteurized egg products. Um, the cinnamon and nutmeg give it a nice little, like, it, it does taste like fall to me. What did you think, Richard? Yeah, it tastes like fall. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Okay. Can you do me a quick favor? I unfortunately put my recipe on top of the dish towel. Thank you. <laughs> what would I do without you, Richard? Okay. So I'm just going to get a damp paper towel and um, go over the parts of my pan that are a little bit messy just because I don't like it, you know, I don't like messes. And also, um, I don't want these will burn because they're not incorporated into the cake. And we don't want that either. I'm just going to go around that. Another one. Thank you, Richard. Okay. And get it nice and clean. And you don't have to worry about the sides so much as the upper edges because, you know, it's going to rise. But like right here around the tube, kind of clean that off. There we go. Because it is going to rise, like I said. So we're good. But I am going to spray just a little bit more. Uh, on the tube so it doesn't stick. There we go. Okay. Pamela, Pamela V says nice ball dessert. Oh, thank you, Pam. Welcome in. Hello to you and Jim. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I've been loving Jim's food um, photos on Instagram. <laughs> they make me hungry. <laughs> okay. So I'm just, no, I'm going to rinse my hands again because I made a mess again. Boy, this, this cake is messy, you guys. All right. But at least I'm realizing it before I get chocolate everywhere else. Okay. So as I do with all my cakes, I always just tap down to make sure all the air bubbles and all that are out. And, oh, I see a few more places that I missed. I'm really... Oh, hi! Hi, Kellen and Kaylin and Stacy and Tommy. Welcome in. Guys, um, I've been um, wanting to push Kellen's uh, YouTube channel. He does some gaming videos. They're really cute. 
you guys need to check him out. He's really awesome. Um, my mods have the links, or they should, because I sent them to most of my mods. <laughs> but yeah, Kellen's awesome. I have my wall of Kellen up uh, with all my pictures. I love them. And we're going to have leftovers. So, Jack Lee family, if you want leftovers, message me. Okay, so here's our zucchini cake, guys. Okay. And I don't think we've done a chat check yet. So I'm going to put this in the oven. There we go. For about 50 minutes, and then we'll check it. I think it's going to be closer to an hour. But you always want to try at the lowest end because you don't want to burn or overcook your cake. Hi, Aaron. Oh, is it your birthday? Well, happy, happy birthday. I hope you're having a wonderful birthday, and thank you for spending your birthday with me. That's really, really so sweet of you. Kaylee, welcome in. Hi, Lisa Keith and Joey. Hello, hello. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Stephanie. Connie, welcome in. Happy Stalford. Well, hello. Jersey Mike. Hey, Mike. We miss you. When are you coming back? Pamela V. Pamela. Noel Ash. Hello, Noel. I hope you're doing well. Okay. All righty. I'm still getting chocolate. How am I getting chocolate on myself? Melissa from Mouse Talk is here. Melissa, welcome in. I had so much fun with you last night. Jackie C. Hi, Jackie. LJ. LJ, welcome in. Who that Dave? Hi, who that Dave? Scott Malone. Hi, Scott. Eight Bit Vacation. Hi, Brad. I know you're coming out soon too. Sam is so excited to see you guys. So am I. <laughs> Samantha Lowe. I know her. Hi, Sam. C-H. C-H, yay! Katie Mack. Hi, Katie. Welcome in. Peggy Ziegler. Peggy? Zillinger. Peggy Zillinger. Hi, Peggy. If Anthony. we butchered your name, we are so sorry. Anthony the Molar Man. Anthony! Welcome in. I'm always so happy when you're here. You make me smile. <laughs> WDW Mack. Hello. Zach Squirrel. Hey, Zach. Welcome in. Tiki Man Fan. Tiki Man fan, yay! Who else we got? Um, Are we caught up? That's all Sandy Pandy. Sandy, welcome in. That's all Anthony Piccolo. Tony, zucchini. We're doing it right today. <laughs> if I missed you guys, just tag Richard. Yeah. He'll reread it. But thank you, and welcome in. I have so many wonderful friends today. I'm so happy you're all with me, and thank you for spending part of your Sunday with me. That's such an honor. Thank you so much. Richard, I have one request. Can you lower the air conditioning? It's getting hot. Marilyn Barchkowitz. Oh, Marilyn, hi. Welcome in. So glad you're here. Okay. All right, so our next recipe, guys, is going to be Italian zucchini crescent pie and as you know from last time crescent rolls are my absolute favorite ingredient to use on the planet because they're versatile when my um, family was younger um, we you know it's a great way to make a weeknight meal um, and fast and kids love crescent rolls adults love crescent rolls and it's just such an easy way to make almost anything. Um, but this is what it's going to look like. Hi, Gary. Welcome in. Hi, Keith and Mandy. Welcome in from the UK. Margie. Hope you're doing well. Oh, so many friends today. That makes me so happy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. This is going to be like really easy, you guys. So we're going to make our crust out of, you know, crescent rolls. And I sprayed my pie plate. I put a 10-inch pie plate here. So that's going to go there. Um, 
the recipe says to do the crust after you do the zucchini. I'm going to make the zucchini, I mean, the zucchini, the crust before the zucchini, um, just because I'm, I want the dough to set a little bit. Um, and, you know, when you have to press the seams out and all that. So I'm going to do opposite of what the recipe said to do, because I can do that. <laughs> And you guys can do it any way you want to. If you want to prepare the zucchini first, by all means, do that. Hi, Deborah. And just taking, I'm taking note. That sounds like we're on a game show, doesn't it? <laughs> you win a can of crescent rolls. <laughs> a year's supply, Richard. <laughs> That's probably what they thought when I did my crescent roll show, because I bought like 10 cans of crescent roll, though. I did. I, you should have seen it. It was zucchini madness. <laughs> okay. Boom. There we go. This should be like my theme show music. <laughs> Could have me driving in a little car or something. <laughs> That'd be funny. But I digress. <laughs> As I usually do. Okay, so we're just going to separate our triangles like we did when we made our breakfast pie. Okay. Hi, Haley. Welcome in. $10 Oh, thank you so much. That my sister and I are your biggest fan. Oh. Love watching your stream oh, and following so you on social media. Oh. Uh, although we never met, feels like we've been friends forever. You, Richard, Sam are terrific. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for just being here and supporting me. That honestly means the world to me. Um, just having you guys here. Um, it just makes me so happy. And I look forward to this every two weeks. It's, it's like I'm visiting with all my friends and what better way to do it than with food. It brings everyone together. Food and music, I believe, are things that just bring everyone together and just makes everything better and happy. I like that. The world needs more kindness and everything. And I just like to be in this environment where we can all just enjoy each other and, you know, just spread the fun, friendship and kindness and all that good stuff. I'm, I'm looking at my crescent rolls because I'm like, I hope there's not a little bit of chocolate on me left somewhere. <laughs> Get chocolate in the zucchini pie. Melissa said, Donna is the most welcoming person you'll ever meet. Oh, and I think you are too, Melissa. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for saying that. I just had the best time with you and um, Walt and Jeff and Angela last night. Oh my gosh. I, I think we were laughing so so much in the carousel of progress. It was funny. We were looking for all the hidden cats and we, we were joking around. I, I, I said that um, Uncle Orville was uh, Steve from Steve's World. <laughs> Love you, Steve. <laughs> Tony Piccolo says, Donna, maybe we need to set up a Disney meet and greet where we all bring a dish. A potluck. That is a great idea, Tony. I love it. Love it. Okay. So I'm thinking this is almost done. I don't know why. Some seams are not sticking together like they normally would. They're giving me an issue, which is why I wanted to do this first. Okay. Donna, thanks for making so many of us happy, too. Glad to be here. Oh, Pamela, I'm always so happy when all of you were here. You and Jim, it was such a pleasure to meet you guys, and I hope I get to see you guys again. It was so great talking Greek food with Jim and just every all New England stuff and all kinds of stuff. You guys are awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's what he said. We can call it Dining with Donna. Oh, I love it. That's so cool. Okay, I don't know why this part is not, okay, I better just leave it alone because I get it to go and then I touch it again and it comes apart. It's one of those tricky ones. 
Hi, Triple A Sparkles. So glad you're here. Good to see you. Hi, Classy Disney Mom. Well, hello. Kindness personified. Oh, thank you so much. I think that's so so kind of you. And I just think it's so important that we remember, you know, that we're all important and no one's more important than another person and we all matter. By what? Oh, incoming. <laughs> okay. I think Richard thinks I'm getting sappy now, so he's like, stop. Okay, I'll stop. But I do love you guys. You mean the world to me. Okay. So now we have our crust made, which is a later step, but I kind of transpose things. So now when we're going to bake this one at 375, and in a 12-inch skillet, we're going to melt two tablespoons of butter over medium-high heat and add four cups of thinly sliced zucchini, a cup of chopped onions, and... Then after we get that cooked about six to eight minutes till it's tender, we're going to stir in parsley flakes, salt, pepper, garlic, powder, basil, and oregano. Now, I will say instead of basil and oregano, I just opted for uh, Italian seasoning, and it was just easier than measuring out different, you know, a whole bunch of different spices. So I just went with that. But we're going to start. I'm going to grab my butter. Which I already have ready. I'm going to get the skillet going. Okay. And I'm going to grab my zucchini. Now, I um, pre-sliced my zucchini to save time and my onion, for that matter. Um, this is what we're looking at here. I'd say it's maybe like an eighth of an inch thick. So, yeah, you got four cups. It's my four cup measure. So we've got exactly four cups. And then it's a cup of chopped onions, two tablespoons of dried parsley flakes. And I measured out all the spices ahead of time. So I, I don't know what I did with the cake, but everything else was measured out. So I've got um, two tablespoons of dried parsley flakes, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, um, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I just did a half a teaspoon instead of... Um, Italian seasoning instead of a quarter teaspoon each of basil and oregano. Then I'm going to use two eggs and uh, two cups of Munster or mozzarella cheese. I'm using a shredded Italian blend. That you can use really whatever you want. Um, it's it's not really, you know, that big of a thing. I wouldn't use like cottage cheese or ricotta, but any you know shredded cheese of your choosing is fine. At Halloween, you should use Munster. <laughs> Oh, the Munster, right? <laughs> okay. Federico Prada is here. Hello, Federico. Welcome in. Okay, now I have my onion. Let's see. I'm going to say this is onion. I have two cups of onion. That's for the fritters. <laughs> I had a, hmm. Craig I, hi, Craig. Welcome in. This is the half of an onion, right? Half a cup. No, one cup. Okay, so my big thing of onions is around here somewhere. I just don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. And I was going to double check I have the right onions. Oh, hi, Mom. That's my mom. I say it every time. Carol Hanks is my mom, and I love her very much. Hi, Mom. Okay. Okay, yeah. This is what goes in here. Okay, so this is going to go in here. That's going to go in the fritters, but I just want to make sure I put it back where it goes. Yes, okay. We're good. We're good. I needed onions for two recipes, and one called for more than the other, and this is the one that called for more than the other. So there I chopped my onions ahead of time, and I used a sweet onion. You can use whatever kind of onion you want. I can smell the onion. Can you smell? <laughs> it's a strong onion. Okay. So now our pan's sizzling here. 
and melt our butter. And then we're going to um, get our zucchini in the pan. Butter's almost melted. That little bit is going to be fine. I'm going to throw in the zucchini. And the onion. And get everything out of here. There we go. Nice. Get the rest of the zucchini out of here. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And we're just going to saute this until everything's tender. And it's going to cook down a bit. So that's a good thing. Because it's going to fit into the pie plate. She's ghostly wants to know if you're doing a Halloween treat stream. Oh, well, I will tell you this. My regular stream this year actually falls on exactly on Halloween. And I have some treats in store for you guys. A lot of them. It's going to be a Halloween bonanza, and I'm hoping to have some special guests, and it's going to be a really, really fun time. So don't miss it. <laughs> okay. Nick said he's going around telling all the guests in World of Disney to click and stand and watch. To do what? To watch your show. Oh, that's so nice of you, Nicholas. Thank you. They're probably like, what? <laughs> Who? Ashley Loves Disney is here. Well, hello. Welcome in. And it's so glad you could join us. And Disney Up Boiler Up is here. Brandy, I got your card finally. I don't know if you saw it. I, I read um, or showed your card at the beginning of the stream. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Okay. I don't know why these three zucchinis are sticking together but they're making me nervous. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, are we on stove cam? Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I just do the cooking around here. <laughs> okay, so guys, do you have any questions or anything um, up to this point on what we've done or anything? Just let me know. Oh, and you know what? While this is cooking, uh, it's time to feed Ricky our fish. <laughs> so I'm going to do that really quick. <laughs> He's probably really hungry. There you go. Oh, yep, he's hungry. Hmm. Good thing I remembered. Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen, welcome in. So glad you are here. Blue Polo and Blue Polo. Oh, Blue Polo and Blue Polo's mom. It's always so nice when you're here. Welcome in. Nope, I actually just sliced them um, by hand, but you could definitely use a slicer, dicer, your food processor, whatever works for you. Um, I only used like three zucchini, so it didn't take me long to just hand chop them. Oh, are you sick, Margie? I'm so sorry. Well, I hope this helps take your mind off of things, and I hope you're resting up, and, and I hope you get to feeling better very soon. Hi, Anthony. Welcome in. Grace asks, says, will this be, need to be drained after cooking? The zucchini throws up, so throws off so much water. It does. I'm going to see where it's at. The recipe doesn't say to drain it, which is odd, but we are going to see what happens here. Amy Rhino, too, says hi. Well, hello, Amy. Canadian Tinkerbell Ear is here from Nova Scotia. Oh, from Nova Scotia. Well, that's great. Welcome in. 
Ronnie, the po' boy boy's mom. Ronnie! Uh, Hi, Ronnie. It was so nice meeting you at Epcot the other day. That was so much fun. And the guy that brought us all dinner last night, Carlos, is here. Oh, Car thanks for dinner, Carlos. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, you've got to try that place, though. I think you would absolutely love it. Um, don't go if you have other plans during the day, though, because it does take a long time. And that's my only, like... Uh, negative on it is that um, the service and it's historically been slow at the wave it just carried over it's the same it's still very slow the food is excellent and um, but it take it takes you at least an hour and a half I would say to have dinner wouldn't you say Richard we were there over two hours yeah but there was seven of us yeah but like they forgot my onion rings and Everyone else had eaten and uh, their appetizers, and mine still hadn't come out. And Sam and Richard and I were sharing, so I felt bad because everyone was, you know, like, "Do we wait?" Or and, I, and every I'm like, "Just go ahead and eat, everybody," because by the time my food came out, it, we had been sitting there for an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I wouldn't let that deter you, though. Just just plan accordingly, and know that it's going to take time. I would do it on a day you don't have a park or something to get to afterwards for fireworks or anything like that. Um, and Sam and I, are, we, it was so good. We're actually going back for lunch on Saturday. So it was that good. Anthony Manzano asks, when you're cooking vegetables in your frying pan, have, they, have you ever thought of pan frying it for a little bit then putting it in the oven? The vegetables? Um, yes. But I'm doing it the way the recipe said this time, um, just because I've never made it this way. Um, I normally would just do what you said and uh, finish them off in the oven. But this says to do it until they're tender. Uh, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, and it will also, when I've made my version of this pie, I put the zucchini and everything in um, after I've seasoned it. And then I pour the eggs and cheese over. This has me mixing it in a bowl. Um, so we're gonna see how this turns out. But this is Pillsbury's recipe, uh, the official maker and manufacturer of the Crescent Rolls. So I'm gonna say they've tested their recipes though. Claudia Miller says, I already made this today because I couldn't wait. And it's very good and flavorful. Recommend foil on the edges as the crust cooks quicker than the middle. Yes, and it says that in the recipe too, to tent it, uh, the edges with some foil, and we will do that for sure. Carlos said they're going for breakfast on their last day. Oh, you're going to love it. The breakfast menu looked amazing, Carlos. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And I will say, anyone who is interested in um, steak, uh, it's one of the more affordable steaks um, on Disney property, and it was quite excellent. Mine was cooked to perfection. I ordered mine medium. Um, and we all got New York strips, Sam and Richard and I, and we all ordered different temperatures. Sam ordered medium well, I believe. I ordered medium, and Richard ordered medium rare, right? And did you have any complaints about your steak? No, it was really good. Yeah. Cooked perfect. Yep. And the all gratin potatoes were good, too. They were very good. Everything was excellent. Um, the only thing I will say is they did take away uh, free bread service. So if you want bread, you have to order it. And if you want extra sauce, like Sam wanted extra steak sauce, because there's a uh, signature sauce, uh, the Steakhouse 71 sauce. It's kind of like an A1 and Heinz 57 sauce kind of mixed together, I think. Okay. But it's really good, but they to get more, you, they charge you $2.50 for a little cup. And they only give you about a tablespoon. Yeah, they didn't give you much to start out with, and I think they do that on purpose. So just beware. And, of course, Jeff asked for ketchup. Jeff did what? Asked for ketchup. Yes, and they brought Jeff a big thing of ketchup, and they don't charge you for the ketchup. So I said, I pointed that out to Jeff. I'm like, you know, your ketchup is free. <laughs> Rob Fuzz is here. Rob, welcome in. So glad you're here. We've been enjoying your retro um, Disney 
uh, celebration videos. They've been fun. We've had to ninja watch because it's been a really, really crazy week. Oh, sweet. Is he heading to Madison Square Garden or the garden where you get your vegetables? <laughs> and if you're heading to Madison Square Garden, who are you seeing and why aren't you taking me? No, just kidding. <laughs> Carlos, um, Jeff got the pork chop and he put ketchup on it. Yeah. But Walt had steak and he put ketchup on it. Yeah. You know, between those two and my super taster Steve, um, <laughs> I don't know what to do <laughs> with these boys. Okay, so I used to when I lived in Alaska. Um, I don't know if I could here because the soil in Florida uh, combined with the sun, which is so severe and strong here, I don't know if I would know how to grow vegetables here properly um, because I'm used to uh, northern climates being from New England and Alaska. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to do things a lot differently. And plus we have armadillos. One's tearing up my yard right now, and I'd be afraid it would tear up the garden. <laughs> Carla said, ugh, those two are embarrassing to have dinner with. I know, right? But, yeah, they ha we had um, the peanut butter and jelly wings. You didn't try those, Richard, but they were excellent. They sound weird. I, I admit they sound weird, but they tasted amazing. It reminded me almost of like a, a chicken satay, if you guys know what that is. Um, you know, like a Thai chicken where they use like a peanut sauce. And it's not jelly. It's jelly powder. So it just gives it a hint of sweetness. And I thought it was excellent. And just like that, so I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with these people. <laughs> I love them and they're my friends, so Keith we just go with it. Keith and Mandy want to know how Ricky the Fish is. How what? Ricky the fish is. Ricky is doing really well. I just fed him. He's very active for a beta fish. And, um, yeah, I think he's thriving. He, he was very hungry, though, so I think it's a good thing I fed him when I did. <laughs> I usually feed him at 445, and it was 456 when I fed him, and I think he knew. He was like, hey, lady, you're late. Because um, with beta fish, we feed them twice a day. So I feed them at 9.45 and 4.45 every day. But there's also, if we're not going to be here, they have these little pellet things. You guys must know what they are. And you can leave them in the tank for like a week, and they'll feed them for a week if, if we have to not be home, which is good. We're finally getting somewhere. They're starting to... Um, Reduce down, as you can see, which is good. Another couple of minutes, and they should be ready to be seasoned. And then we'll mix it with the eggs and cheese. Now, that's the other thing. We're mixing this with this mixture with eggs and cheese. So we need to let this cool down. Otherwise, the eggs, of course, will curdle. So, you know, that's another thing I didn't quite understand because usually I would do what um, I believe it was Anthony Manzano said and, and do the vegetables partway and then finish them off in the oven. But I think one of the reasons we're not doing that with this also is, again, someone else pointed out. I can't, I'm can't. i sorry. I can't remember which one of you said it. But about the moisture coming out. So maybe that's why. We're cooking these so much ahead of time so we don't get a soggy crust. That would be my um, my guess. I'm looking good. Okay. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you guys about the Steakhouse 71, not to digress or anything, but anyone who loves 
Disney history is going to love it there. Um, the contemporary as a whole, they redid the whole lobby, and it's very retro um, to the original uh, Disney that opened in 1971, but with a modern twist. And it's done so well. And when you're walking in to um, Steakhouse 71, like it was the wave, um, on the sides of the walls now are all portraits of Walt and Imagineers and the history of Disney. And I could look at that all day. It was incredible. Kind of reminiscent of what you see at the Riviera with old photos of Walt and stuff. It was just so cool. What do you think, Richard? It was really cool with all the pictures and just the way they did the whole lobby, too. Mm -hmm. The lobby has much more seating now, and they even have tables you can sit at with your family. So if you want to grab, like, Joffrey's or do some work on your iPad or computer, uh, you can bring it with you, and you actually have a workspace now, which I think is brilliant. And they have USB ports everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the, the children's area where they have the little cartoons playing has a Mary Blair wall, uh, which is really, really cute. I love it. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me. It's reduced by, I would say, about a third. And we are going to add garlic. Carlos wants to know about the peanut butter and jelly wings. I guess he missed it. Oh, my gosh. Carlos, they are amazing. They're available on the lounge menu, apparently. But they let us order them. And on the kids' menu. But they let us order them um, anyhow. And they, you know how a chicken wing usually, they're not that crispy. These were so crispy. And they had, like, a sweet, savory. It was just so hard to describe the exact flavor. But it was absolutely incredible. I would just order those if I could. Those were amazing. Some of the best wings I've ever had. And I, I'm really picky about my chicken wings. Um, I like my chicken wings extra crispy, and these were really, they had the crunch on them like I have not seen in a, a long while, to be honest. Okay, so we just threw in our minced garlic and our um, seasonings, which was, I used Italian seasoning, two tablespoons of parsley flakes, and some onion powder. So there's that. It's going to get this all mixed really well. Happy hopper since hello, everyone. Hey, Rhonda, welcome in. We miss you guys. Okay. Oh, and there was salt in there too, I believe. Forgot the salt. Okay, so now this mixture needs to cool down. So we're going to put it aside. I'm going to rinse out these little dishes real fast. And then um, I'm going to make the egg and cheese mixture that we're going to mix the zucchini with. And then we will make the filling for the pie and put it in the oven. All right, I'm just doing a quick cleanup, guys. Nice. I have to be sure to save some of this pie for Nick. He'll love it. <laughs> and Steve, too, right? Okay, so that's for my fritter bowl. All right, let's see. We're going to need a mixture bowl for, or mixing bowl, rather, for our um, uh, zucchini. So, um, where'd my, all right, here we go. We're going to need... A half a cup of egg beaters. Um, you can use whole eggs by all means. I'm using egg beaters. It's just what I use. Um, and two cups of the um, shredded. I'm using Italian blend, which is like um, mozzarella, provolone, uh, pecorino romano, asiago, parmesan. It's all in there. So you got all the Italian cheeses. We need to get our fish cam set up so people can look at the fish if they want to. Okay, so eggs, I gotta get the cheese. Okay. This could not be simpler. We're gonna measure half a cup of egg beaters. 
always shake it well if you're using the egg beater. So mixes and incorporates. Okay. Oh, and I forgot two teaspoons of yellow mustard. How did I forget that? And this is why I reread the recipe. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's our two cups of um, shredded Italian cheese. And like I said, it's uh, mozzarella, provolone, uh, parmesan, romano, fontina, and asiago are on this one. And it says right there, two cups. So eight ounces of shredded cheese equals two cups, just so you know. Carlos said, speaking of fish, Donna, we need an all seafood stream. Ooh, I would love that. But unfortunately, Richie doesn't like seafood. I don't know if the Jackleys like seafood because I can always send it home with them. So, Jackley family, if you're still here, give a thumbs up if you like seafood. Amy Baranowski is here. I don't think Tommy likes it. <laughs> Amy Baranowski. Hi, Amy. Okay. No, I think Tommy said he. Only like the he likes meat foods. and potatoes. He, right. I remember because he's like you. Yeah. Although you do eat my fish tacos and you eat my salmon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to guesstimate on the um, mustard, two teaspoons. I mean, if you have a little more, a little less, it's not going to hurt anything. There we go. Now, I think you can use... You know, your favorite mustard. You could use Dijon. Um, I, I, I don't think honey mustard would go well in this recipe. But that's just me. Um, but, you know, whatever makes you happy. And I mix this all in. Tommy said, you are correct. Everyone but Tommy likes seafood in this house. <laughs> well, you know what we can do, Tommy? We can make, like, something that you would like along with the seafood. How's that? We could do it and spread it out that way. And that would be fun because, you know, a lot of people, like in my house, not everybody likes seafood. So I can figure out a way to, like, make it so everybody in your house gets what they want. And um, it would work in my house and a lot of other households because I know, you know, like Walter, <laughs> he's not an adventurous eater, but Melissa is. She's like me. So, yeah, that would be cool if we did something where, you know, we kind of did something for the adventurous eaters and something for the, you know, steak and potatoes people. Carlos said it's the Portuguese in me. I live on fish. Mm-hmm. Yep, for sure. Fish is very fat. Well, I grew up in New England, so I mean, I was kind of born into seafood. <laughs> we have quahog, clams, as you know, Carlos. Have, uh, Carlos, you know what stuffies are, right? I should make stuffies. Should I make stuffies, Carlos? What do you think? I love talking Rhode Island food with, <laughs> with Carlos. <laughs> Tommy said, sounds like a plan. Yay, I love it. Then he says, I will always keep you challenged. <laughs> I love that. I'm always up for a challenge. You ask all these people. That's why um, when we did the Beverly challenge, I drank 23 four-ounce cups of Beverly. And uh, I don't go down without a fight. <laughs> ask all the boys. I took all but two boys down. And I was older than most of them, so. <laughs> And the only girl participating, so I just I'm proud of that. I took you down, Richard, <laughs> and Corey too. Okay, guys. So now I've incorporated the zucchini. So this is what it looks like with the cheese and the eggs and everything. Now I'm just gonna put it in a pie shell. Melissa said, "I'm from New England. I have no idea what a stuffy is." Ah, I think it's kind of a Rhode Island thing, Melissa. So a stuffy is a clam, and you take the clam and you make like a stuffing out of it, like a bread stuffing with the clams. And then you put it back into the shell and you bake it. 
and they call them stuffies. Carlos says he makes 20 dozen stuffies a week at work. <laughs> you probably don't want to look at them. <laughs> Scott Malone says he hates Beverly. Oh, no. I, I wasn't too fond of it after that challenge. I'll, t I'll tell you. I liked it a lot more before. It's back. It's back, but I'm not getting a challenge. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Cricket Fox says, good morning, Donna. Oh, good morning, Cricket. Good morning, Welcome Cricket. in. Okay. And as you can see, guys, I'm going to, can I see this? It really fills up your, your pipe uh, shell really nicely. Oh, it would help if I moved the eggs out of the way. Sorry, Richard. Okay. I'll rinse this off because I might need it again. Okay. <laughs> Kathleen Stalford says that sounds like Clam Casino here in Philadelphia. Yes, it's very similar, Kathleen. Okay, so I can use that to make the fritters in. And then I'm going to... Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have 10 minutes left on our cake. So... I'm going to put this in the oven. It's not at 375 like the recipe says, but I'm going to put it in and just put extra time on it. Um, but here's what it looks like. It's beautiful. So we're going to put this in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Richard, look at his cake. It looks amazing. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So 10 minutes. Richard, can you write down and remember when the cake comes out... I need to put jack up the oven to 375, and I need to add about 15 minutes onto the timer. Can you do that? Will you? Chat, remember, <laughs> when I go to take the cake out of the oven, remind Richard I need to turn the oven up to 375. I, I'm going to try to remember it myself, but if I don't, uh, I need to turn the oven up to 375 and add 10, about 10 more minutes to the timer. Thank you. I can take the eggs. Did I say 15? Oh, 15. Sorry. See, I already forgot because I was calculating in my head according to the recipe. <laughs> All right, guys. Michelle the quilter is here. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. She said her mom makes Clams Casino. Yum. Love Clams Casino. So, Carlos, if you're still here, can you tell us all... Uh, the difference between Clamps Casino and, uh, and Stuffies. Or are they the same? I don't think they're the same. I think it's the kind of clam we use in Rhode Island, isn't it? Michelle says they're the same. They are the same? Yeah. Okay. And Dad Bill says hi. Hey, Chris. Welcome in. I'm just washing this pan out really fast because I'm going to use it for the um, zucchini boats that we're making next. So... And that's going to be our next recipe for those of you following along. And all the links to the recipes are in the video description. So the next one we're making is the um, zucchini boats. And they're bacon cheeseburger stuff. Really yummy. Mm -hmm. Mortal. Mortal. <laughs> Try it again. The three foolish mortals. There you go. Donna Jaworski, we're on our way for dinner. Oh, John, save us some. <laughs> Hi, three foolish mortals, and welcome in. And sorry, Richard, kind of messed up your name there, but I'm, I'm suspecting three foolish mortals isn't your real name, so I, I don't think it's that big of a thing. <laughs> Hopefully. And if it is, we are sorry. <laughs> okay. Nice clean pan, ready to go. Carlos said the difference is the stuffy is much larger and drier. Yeah, that's what I thought. It is different. They use quahogs, quahogs. which are larger. Quahog clams. clams, yeah. Because my uncle, um, you know, the one who passed away recently, he used to go and, and get the quahog uh, clams and make the stuffies himself. Okay. I'm just going to clean this off a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to put my pan at medium, medium-high heat. Um, we're going to brown our ground beef. 
extraordinary is leaving. Oh, okay. Bye, Kaylee. And I'm so glad that you made it. And hugs to you and Larry and your dad and, and your brother and your mom. Um, we love you guys and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope we get to talk to you soon. All right, I got to grab the zucchini. All right, and that's going to be for the... The three foolish mortals said, our John's no problem. We laughed. <laughs> Thank you, three foolish mortals. You're kind. I wouldn't let him off that easy. No, just kidding. <laughs> Ron Davis says, my, Ron. Wife, my wife and I love the show. Thanks for sharing your great recipes. Oh, Ron, thank you so much for being here. That means the world. Welcome in. And I'm so glad you guys like the show. Okay, guys. So I have um, a pound. This is more than a pound. This is probably a pound and a half of, um, I use 97% lean ground beef. Uh, I'm sorry, 93% lean ground beef. So that's what I've got here. We're going to brown it up with some onion. And... Um, I'm going to show you how to make the zucchini boats. This is one thing I didn't want to do ahead of time because I'm going to show you how to do it because the trick is to not go all the way through. So we're going to make the zucchini boats. And Mickey Travels is here. Hey, Mickey Travels. Welcome in. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I know it's been a busy weekend. Okay, I'm going to get my melon baller scooper out for this. And I'm going to need... A pan, but I'll grab the pan in a minute. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my board from Extraordinary. And I'm going to cut the ends off of the zucchini, which have been well washed, by the way. Three Foolish Mortals said, we're actually cooking with Donna as oh. well. Elizabeth is cooking cupcakes. Oh, that's amazing. What kind of cupcakes? I love cupcakes. And Tony Piccolo wants to know if you just use green zucchini or the yellow one's okay to use. Um, I'm just using green zucchini. I think you could use yellow if you wanted to. It's just a preference. I think the green holds up a little bit better. The uh, summer squash, the yellow one, is a little bit softer, I find. Um, this one's a little bit more hearty. So I would, I would stick with zucchini at least for the um, boats. Um, but for like the cake and stuff like that, I think you could use yellow squash. Okay. Let's see how we are here. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. I'm going to cut these in half lengthwise. See, like that. Hey, Preston. Producer Preston is here. Preston! Welcome in, Pete. It's good to see you. The countdown is on, Preston. I can't wait to see you. Okay, so see, we're cutting these lengthwise like this. I'm just going to set them on my big board for a minute. And if you are like a not, not a novice, but if you're afraid you cut yourself or anything like that with them like this, then you can turn them on the flat side that you cut and just go down like this. Cricket Fox says, my mom always used green. She felt the yellow didn't hold up. Yeah, I think maybe there's more water content. Um, I mean, you could try it. But um, I, I definitely would stick with zucchini, for, with my preference anyway. Okay. We're going to get the ground beef and the onion going in the pan to brown. And then I need to scoop out the zucchini and um, make the boats. So we're going to get this going. Oh, it's just sizzling already. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm going to get this in here. Three Foolish Mortars said, Donna, oops. You said mortars. Again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they are blueberry and banana nut bread muffins she's made. Oh, my gosh. That's good, too. That sounds amazing. Said Elizabeth loves making zucchini boats, too. Ooh. 
Yeah, they're a really great weeknight meal. These are very low carb, um, so you can indulge in these and not worry about, you know, your low carb diet or keto if you're doing that. Very diet friendly. And if my friend Nikki Travels is still in the chat, you could use impossible meat with this. And you can leave off the bacon. Okay. So a lot of things are going on at the same time. So I'm going to have to do some time management. I'm going to start scooping out the pulp because the pulp is going to go into... I'm going to use a spoon. Melissa said she loves zucchini boats, but she hasn't made them in ages because Walt does, won't eat them. Why did that not surprise me? Oh, that makes me sad. Okay, so now it's time to uh, check the cake, okay? Um, I had my, oh, I'm going to stick a toothpick and see how we're doing. All right. First, I'm going to do the beef a little bit more. I gotta throw the onion in here too. I'm gonna take this off of the heat just for a minute while I'm dealing with the cake because I don't want to overcook everything. Because the zucchini needs to cook with that. This cake looks amazing. Okay. Be very careful. Okay, I'm thinking it's going to need a little more time, but what do I know? I'm going to say about five more minutes. Now, let me try it in a different place and see. Oops. Always go in, like, if you can find, like, the thickest spot. Yeah, it's almost clean, but not quite. I'm going to give it five more minutes in the oven, which I kind of figured it would. I did the least amount of time. So we'll do five minutes. Kitchen timer, five minutes, start. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get back to scooping out the zucchini because that's going to go into our pan with the... Um, ground beef. Now the key is to scrape and scrape, but not go all the way to the bottom. And I tried using a melon baller, but it, I guess the um, pulp is a little bit firm. So I'm going with the spoon is, is my best friend right now. And we did three zucchini, so you're going to get six zucchini boats out of this. And I, oh, did I show you? So this is what it looks like. And you can see, oops, how deep it is. So you get all of that pulp out of there. And it's, we're not wasting it because we're going to put it in with our beef and our onion. I'm going to put the beef back on the burner. Stephanie Danielle wants to know, how long can you keep these as leftovers? Do they get soggy? Um, I think you can keep them, I would say, up to three to five days in your fridge, no longer than that. Um, but they freeze beautifully. Um, you could definitely freeze them in an airtight container. I would wrap them and then put them in an airtight container just to, you know, keep them from getting freezer burn and all that. 
but yeah, you can definitely um, use them as leftovers for, for quite a while. Judy Hazel wants to know if you ever Hi, made Judy. if you ever made yellow squash chocolate bread or cake. I have not, and I think, like someone else had pointed out, I believe it was Cricket. Um, the reason being is I believe like um, the yellow summer squash um, is softer, and the, the outer layer, the skin, is also very uh, soft, so it doesn't hold up like a zucchini does. So I, I think its integrity in a recipe would be a bit different. I think the moisture content's higher also. And Disney Princess Couture says this is amazing. Hey, Rachel. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, this is an awesome recipe. And um, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that you're here. But it, this is great. I mean, it's a great weekday meal. So easy to do. I mean, look, you're using a spoon. Who doesn't have a spoon lying around? Chef Shez Kureshi says, hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Welcome in. I'm sorry we butchered your name. <laughs> but we're glad to have you here. Hope you're enjoying the show. And now you could have, and, and I wanted to show you how I make the boats uh, for those of you who didn't know how they were made. But you could definitely do these ahead of time because like I was saying, zucchini, unlike other vegetables, it doesn't oxidate, it doesn't brown. Um, that's why you'll see cut zucchini at the store and they sell it for like a week because it doesn't go bad and it doesn't brown because it's very low in acid. So you could definitely scoop out your zucchini ahead of time. If you're making, you know, if you're busy on a weeknight and you want to come home from work and just do the stuffing. Rachel says, I wouldn't miss it. I'm so excited to learn and try these. Oh, that's awesome, Rachel. I'm excited for you. And I hope I make these accessible for you so that, you know, I want everyone, you know, from beginning cooks to advanced cooks to be able to do these recipes and enjoy them. Okay. So now we've got more things going on. So I'm going to check my cake again. I'm going to check the beef again. Chef Shez Qureshi said I said his name right. Oh, wonderful. And Thank he, you. And he also runs a cooking channel. Oh, that's amazing. I'll have to uh, check your channel out and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching mine. I appreciate that. And the uh, super taster says, Donna, I want food, but not zucchini. How about cream cheese, Steve? <laughs> cream cheese zucchini, just for Steve. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I need to check the cake again because we yeah. don't want to overcook it. Jersey gonna... Mike said, I'll take yours, Steve. <laughs> I love it. All right, so now we're going to grab our zucchini cake out of the oven again. I think it's going to be done now. And then I'm going to have to add another five to 10 minutes and jack up the oven for the zucchini pie we made. Whew, that's laying off a lot of heat today. Okay. All right. I gotta get a new toothpick because this one is not clean from the first time. And let's see what we got here. Okay, go in another place just to make sure. Okay, we're good. So, Donna, thank you. Don't don't you start John from Carousel of Progress. So three seven five, and then there we go.
and then we're going to put the timer on. All right. So now at this point, we need to put the cake on a cooling rack for about 15 to 20 minutes doesn't until we can invert it out. So I'm going to put it over here on my cooling rack, which I had set up over back here. Okay. So that's out of our way. Now I'm going to add the onion and the zucchini pulp to the ground beef that is browning here. Oh, and that's another tip. If you need something to come out of your you know, container, if it's sticking, just tap on the bottom, tap on the side, it'll come out. Evan Hudden says, hi, Donna. How are you doing today? Hi, Evan. I'm doing great. How are you? All right. This is looking good. All right. So now I'm going to get the zucchini pulp, I believe, but I'm just going to double check myself because. Uh, okay. That was for the pie. That's for the cake. Zucchini boats are here. Okay, that just means the oven reached temperature. Do we add the garlic now? We have to add some garlic to this. And then... Get a spoon. We need to add, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Okay. We're not ready yet. When the meat is not pink anymore, then we put the garlic, our um, tomatoes. And so I'm going to just put my minced garlic, which I have over there. And then I have this can of petite diced tomatoes. And I already drained them really well and squeezed out all the moisture out with paper towels um, through a, a sieve. Uh, so that's that. We'll add that. And then what else do we need to add? We'll need to add bacon, salt, and pepper. Oh, that's because she takes the easy way out. <laughs> oh, Melissa, I love it. Okay, so we got some bacon here. Cricket Fox wants to know if you can, with the cake batter, can you bake those as muffins? Absolutely. You absolutely could. You can make mini loaf cakes. Absolutely you could. Kimmy J says, just tuning in, I love zucchini. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad you love zucchini. I do too. And yeah, um, getting back to that, if you do make muffins and or uh, mini loaf cakes or anything like that, you just want to cut the time probably in half because you don't want to over bake. That would definitely burn if you bake that for an hour. So I check it after like 30 minutes and then check it every five to 10 minutes after that. And Chef Chez wants to know if you could add red wine. Absolutely. Yes. I always um, try to give like a base recipe and then I love when you guys just, you know, jazz it up however you guys want to. Um, so yeah, this is like the basic recipe for like the global audience. And if you want to add or subtract or, you know, if you don't like onions, use something else, absolutely go right ahead. I forgot to get my baking dish. This might get loud. So I apologize in advance. Let's see if you can name this viewer. He what? says, hey, hey, Donna, Richard, and Sam. Woohoo. <laughs> that must be Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, welcome in. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> oh, Jerry, we miss you. Melissa said it's really good with salsa, actually. Oh, I would imagine so. Because you could really do anything you don't have to do bacon cheeseburger with these you could do italian sausage and peppers in these you could do salsa chicken you could do salsa beef like you do melissa you could do anything really 
You can use impossible meat. You could even make like tuna melts if you wanted to. So I just sprayed my 13 by 9 inch pan with um, cooking spray. Where's the camera? Oh, it's over at the stove, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So I sprayed my 9 by 13 inch pan with Pam just because, I mean, you don't have to. This is a nonstick pan to start with, so. And just make your zucchini boats fit in there like that. You're all good. And then, there we go. Yep. Okay. This does not say to drain the meat. I wonder why it says not to drain the meat, but we're not going to drain it because it said not to. We must need the liquid for something. And it's a good thing I used lean ground beef because I couldn't imagine using like 85% because it would have a lot more fat and liquid to drain off. So I'm glad I used went with the 93% lean. Okay, this is looking good now. Now is the point we can add our zucchini pulp, which we have right here. This is going to be so yummy. Okay. I'll mix that off after. And then we have our garlic. Throw that in. Jonathan Thomas. Hey, Jonathan, welcome in. And Dreamer Deborah has been listening while she was driving. Deborah, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. Okay. And now I think I'm going to need a measuring spoon because I'm going to need to measure more Italian seasoning. Put my garlic back in the fridge. And we're going to need a teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So this is a quarter teaspoon. So I'm going to do four of these. One, two, three, and four. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Where did I put the salt? Oh, here it is. Quarter teaspoon of salt. That looks like too little to me. I'm going to put just a little bit more. Okay. Because I think I had more than a pound of beef. That's probably why. And then pepper. And then... And then we're going to bring to a slight boil. Oh, and the tomatoes. Forgot the tomatoes. In they go. And actually, oh, where'd my little spade go? I need to scoop out a little bit because I'm supposed to reserve some for the tops of the uh, squash. So there we go. A little bit. And then the black pepper. I think I'll use my freshly ground instead of black pepper from the can because I just, I like freshly ground pepper better. There we go. I'm going to leave the pepper here just in case we need it for anything else. We're making fritters, so we'll see how that goes. We might need pepper for that. And then you just carefully stir. And incorporate everything well. Oops. And don't do what I just did, which is fling your meat all across the stove. 
So be careful. And you want your seasoning to be evenly distributed in the zucchini and the tomato, all of that good stuff. Okay. Okay, so now let me check the pie. Looks to be almost done. I'm going to give it maybe five more minutes to firm up. Okay. All right. And this says now, do, 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 do. oh, half a cup of bacon. I didn't add the bacon yet. And then we're going to lower the temperature. There we go. And simmer for about five minutes, which is perfect because that's how much time we have on the pie. So we'll lower this down. Incorporate our bacon. Jerry said, we used to grow zucchini in our garden in Indiana. Always had plenty of zucchini. One of our favorites as a family was zucchini bread, which Jane always made for Christmas morning. Oh, that sounds yummy, Jerry. We always had bumper crops of zucchini in um, Alaska, and we made zucchini relish, we made pickled zucchini, we made zucchini jam, zucchini bread, zucchini cake, stuffed zucchini. We zucchinied everything. <laughs> I love zucchini. You can do so many different things with it. Okay. There we go. So we're going to let that Scott Malone simmer. said, I think sausage would be a good place, in mm -hmm. good place of the ground beef, maybe andouille sausage. I think that would be delicious. Absolutely. And like I said, this is just the base. You go and run with it and make it your own. Um, you can do whatever kind of filling you want, really. Um, you could even do tuna, like a tuna melt. Um, Melissa said no tuna. <laughs> no tuna. <laughs> but you could do chicken. You could do impossible meat. You can even do veggies and, and fill it with veggies and cheese if you want to. It smells really good. Mm hmm Okay. So you haven't tasted anything in a while. You want to come taste the filling? You sound like Liam again. Sure. Okay. Here we can both taste it and see what we think. See if I need to add or do anything different. Make sure you get a little of everything. Mmm. Yummy. Very yummy. <laughs> Very yummy. And this was really easy, guys. And what we're doing now with this is just letting the, the flavors incorporate and, um, you know, marry. And it's going to get even more flavorful as it reduces down. Um, so after this is done uh, simmering, which will be about two to three more minutes, then we're going to um, stir in Parmesan and some cheddar cheese, and then we're going to mound it into our zucchini shells, sprinkle with the remaining cheese, and bake for 25 minutes at 375 degrees. So, yay! We're getting there. Sorry, guys. I needed some water. All right. Not charging. Oh, one of our uh, cameras, the prep cam is not charging. So we're trying to get a different charger on it. Um, so bear with us, guys, if anything, if we lose our prep cam. Let's see if that works. It still says low battery. Uh, well, it should at least start charging now. I can't see if it's charging or not. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. Yeah, it should be working now. Okay. Okay, we should be good to go. Okay. Is 
see what I did there. <laughs> okay, so our pie should be done in about seven seconds. We'll let it cool, and then um, we'll stuff our zucchini boats. Oh, that's perfect. Guys, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So we're going to put this here to cool. And um, Richard, do you want to take a picture of it for the gram and my Facebook group? Oh, and for those of you who aren't already, please uh, consider joining our Facebook group. It's free, and you'll learn all of our recipes uh, that get posted there. We share other recipes there and tips, and people post photos of the recipes they've made from the show in there, and you'll know when my streams are coming up and all that good stuff. All right. Oh, and it's Dinners with Donna on Facebook. <laughs> I probably should have said that. Okay, now we're gonna stir in, I'm gonna turn the heat off on this um, beef mixture, and we are going to mix in, I didn't say how much of the cheese, all of the Parmesan cheese. So a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese, shredded. Brandy and Dave are in the chat. Hey, Brandy and Dave, I'm welcome sure it's in. Dave because he said Donner. David! <laughs> and David, just a heads up, tomorrow is National Taco Day, so I think you better be prepared for Dawson to get some tacos. All right. I need more Parmesan because that's not quite a third in my bag here. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put our Parmesan, all of it, which would be a third of a cup. So I'm going to dump this in here and then a little bit more. There we go. No, that's probably good. Okay. And then we're going to put three quarters of a cup of cheddar cheese. And I'm just using a uh, Fiesta blend cheese instead of pure cheddar. I like mixing my cheese. Um, but the, again, that's a preference. You can use whatever you want. Um, but, you know, traditional bacon cheeseburger. We really have like American cheese. So Parmesan's a different one for me. We'll see how that turns out with the um, cheddar. But I think it's going to be really good. But this is a mixture of uh, Monterey Jack cheddar, uh, queso, quesadilla, and asadero cheese. So they got good stuff in here. I'm going to go like that. Looks about right. I'm going to eyeball it. And again, when you're not baking, you can do it, you know, eyeball it, and you don't really have to measure um, unless, you know, you're, you know, new to cooking and you want to make sure you do it to the recipe. Um, but yet you learn to eyeball it. And also when you're not baking and you're cooking, you can kind of adjust it to your taste. Like if your family likes more cheese, add more cheese. If they like more bacon, add more bacon. If they don't like bacon, you can leave the bacon out. So, you know, you can use different kinds of cheese. You can use as much cheese or little cheese as you like. Although the cheese does help to bind the zucchini boats together so the stuffing doesn't fall all over the place. A new member, apprentice chef Melissa from Mouse Talk. Melissa, thank you so much. Welcome to my memberships. I appreciate that very much. You and Walt are so nice. And Anthony the Molar Man says, Ninja watching Donna, always a great job and harmonious. Oh, thank you so much, Anthony. You're awesome. Okay, now see, you can see the cheese is getting melty, which is what we want. And this is great because this is going to be our last oven dish. And then we're going to be making our zucchini fritters. That's our last thing for the day. And uh, it's going to be really yummy. Okay. 
so now we have our mixture and I'm going to bring it over here and be careful when you're moving your hot pans. I always move it to a, like a, a cutting board or a, a trivet or um, like, see, I have granite countertops and I have no problem putting a hot pan on it. But now that I have my big cutting board that I got, I just put it on the wood cutting board and, and that's fine too. Um, but now we're just going to stuff our zucchini bows and there's no like rhyme or reason except try, you know, not to spill it all, all over. So we're just going to put it in here and be careful not to burn yourself because this mixture is hot. You could let it cool a little bit before you, um, start, you know, putting this in here and I'm going to, I'll put more in it at the end. I'll fill them all you know, initially to get them going. You want to kind of push it down with your spoon, get it mounted in there really nicely so you can pile on the filling because you want a lot of good yummy filling. There we go. Just like that. Be very generous. And like I said, we're going to go back and, and we might have leftover filling. And that's the other thing too. If you have, like, I think I had a, a pound and a half of ground beef instead of a pound. Um, the filling, you can freeze it for like three, four months and uh, you can use it again later. And you can mix this with pasta even if you're not um, low carb or you could um, put it in a baked potato or a baked sweet potato. That would be yummy. Okay. Like I said, you can let this cool a little bit if you don't want to burn your hands because it, it is a little bit warm, but you know, I'm used to cooking and I'm used to hot things. So it doesn't bother me that much, but I bet, I bet it would bother Richard <laughs> and it would bother Sam if they touch this right now. Yeah, I'll have another. We have a who? Oh, your mic broke. <laughs> I took it off. But we have another new member. Oh, how awesome. Sous Chef Disney Princess Couture. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. And I, I really hope you enjoy being a member. And I hope I'm, I'm helping you um, learn how to cook because I know, you know, it, it's hard at first. It's scary. And you, you don't know exactly what you're doing. And you know, you, you don't, you want to do it right. And you're, I know I was always afraid to mess up when I was cooking. I mean, I started cooking when I was seven, but, <laughs> but I know how it is when you're first starting. So if you ever have questions, just let me know. I'm happy to help. And Molly loves Klaus is in the chat. She says, hi, Donna. I changed my name from Molly Rook to the name. I Molly. Well, welcome in Molly. So glad you're here. Okay. Ruth Finch says, we can't eat cheese in our house, so I'll try it without cheese. Looks great. Okay, awesome. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You can do it without the cheese. You can use the, um, I think there's like vegan cheese that doesn't have dairy or anything in it. You could try that maybe. But yeah, we don't, we don't have that much filling left, to be honest. Okay, so you got to try to get them to stand up. And don't be afraid to move them around. Jim Fundakowski. That I make the same thing except with chicken parm stuffed inside. Oh, stop it. That sounds amazing. Oh, no. I want to come to your house for dinner. <laughs> okay. So, guys, that, that was so simple. And now we're just going to, um, I believe we sprinkle the cheese on now. I just want to double check. Alex Gray says hello. Alex, welcome in. So glad you could join us. Let's see. Yep, sprinkle with the remaining cheese and bake. Okay. Rachel said, you sure are. This is an uh, this is an answer to my cooking prayers. Oh, I'm so glad, Rachel. Simba 2 says, hi, Donna. I'm going to be riding, li living in the land soon, so I can get oh, that's get awesome. zucchini. <laughs> yes, please do. Get all the zucchini, but don't get in trouble doing it. 
And Avery says, hola, amigos. Hola, Avery. So glad you're here. All right. Okay. Jim said, you definitely can come back to Rhode Island. <laughs> All right. That sounds awesome. You're on. <laughs> okay. So now we're done with this. I'm going to sprinkle the cheese on these zucchini boats, put them in the oven, and then I'm going to do just a touch of cleanup. <laughs> just like cleaning up. I think I'm making them nervous. <laughs> All right. And like I said, you can do a little, you can do a lot. I like cheese, so. Mom Resort TV once says hello. Jane, I hope you're doing well. We miss you. Amber E is here. Amber, welcome in. These look so yummy. And now the reason we can put the cheese on, um, you know, and then bake it instead of like part way baking it and then putting the cheese on it is because the filling is pretty much already cooked. So we're just cooking the zucchini and um, letting everything, you know, marry together, if you will, and meld together. And Zach is back from cutting the grass. Oh, well, welcome back, Zach. That rhymed. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to go like that. That's good. Okay. They look pretty. We'll put them in the oven. For about 22 to 25 minutes. I'm going to say they're going to go for the 25 because I filled them pretty, pretty well at 375 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is flip the cake. That's always scary. <laughs> okay, there we go. And that's another reason you spray your pan with Pam because, um, I, I, when you're sprinkling the cheese, you're inevitably going to get it on the bottom of the pan and you don't want it to stick. So, all right. I can put this on here. No, I can't. That's too big. <laughs> well, it needs to cool down before I put it away anyway. So I'll just put it over here. All right. Okay, guys. <laughs> this is going to be the moment of truth. So I'm going to bring it over here so I can show you. And I hope, I'm just going to reread that recipe really quick to make sure I've let it cool enough before flipping. It says, yep, 15 minutes. Okay, so now we've got to flip. Woohoo, this is the scary part. But I'm going to show you guys a trick. So what we're going to do, always use your oven mitts because this is still warm. We're going to put the cake here for a minute. Okay, so we've got our cooling rack right here. And I'm going to um, move the cake back here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, cake here, right? This is such a neat trick. I love it. Okay, there's something zucchini or something stuck on here. Yep, it's zucchini. Mm. Okay. So you take your cooling rack with the feet. These are the feet on the bottom because we're going to put it over there. <laughs> and you grab it from the sides like this. See, guys? Oh, please come out. <gasps> it came out perfectly, guys. Look. Nothing stuck. Yay. <laughs> what a relief. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So now we have to let this cool completely before we frost it. So we're going to just put it over to the side where it was before on the um, wax paper because when we frost it, the wet, um, the icing is, is like a ganache. So it's going to drip down and you don't want the excess going all over your counter. So I, I put wax paper underneath the cooling rack so it catches any extra. Oh my goodness. You got to take a picture of that one too. Yeah, much. I did. It's on my fridge. I don't know if you can see it, but that's it. Right there. I'm getting my um, uh, Disney commemorative Make-A-Wish license plate this week. I'm really excited about it. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick cleanup because this is making me nervous looking at this stuff. So I'll do a really, really quick cleanup, guys. Are there any questions? Now would be a great time to ask. Let's see, I think we'll wash that one by hand. I a lot of spoons I can put away. Avery said he was up late last night making a new um, script, modding, and doing creative lyrics for the 50th anniversary. Oh, that's awesome, Avery. You are such an asset to our community. We love you. We appreciate all the things you do for us. You're always modding for everybody and always in the chats and on everything. And when we have a question, we go to Avery. <laughs> Okay, just cleaning up just a tad, guys. Just bear with me. Okay. There we go. There. I don't know where this went. Oh, it's in there. Okay. This I think we can put there. And then I'm not gonna put there. Yeah. Maybe not. Is anyone else's dishwasher kind of like Tetris where you have to fit everything in? That's what I was doing. <laughs> okay, Tetris is over. So we can start making fritters. Now what I'm gonna do now is heat our oil up a little bit. Um, I've got like an inch of, oh, a we on stove, Kim? <laughs> okay. All right, hi guys. So we have about like an inch of um, canola oil in here that we're gonna use to fry our fritters. So we're gonna put it on like high heat because we wanna get it really going. And move this. Yeah, I'm gonna move. You took a picture of this already, right? Did you take a picture of the cake? Okay. All right, so fritters. These are really good. Um, they're savory and not hard to make. Um, we're gonna use four cups of shredded zucchini, a teaspoon of salt, uh, which I already used because that's what you use to, um, you know, get the liquid out of the zucchini. Uh, I talked about that earlier. I do this, uh, I did this two days ahead of time and you'll see the zucchini is green. It doesn't brown. Uh, so you can cut, shred, dice your zucchini way ahead of time. I did this, whoops, wrong camera. <laughs> I did this on Friday and look at it, it's, it looks like I cut it today. And I just um, put salt over it, the teaspoon of salt. I let it sit in a colander in the sink with paper towels for about two to four hours and then squeezed as much of the moisture out as I could. And, and this is the end result. Okay, we're gonna use two large eggs beaten my good friend Egg Beaters is coming back. And then we're going to use a third of a cup of sliced green onions, two cloves of minced garlic. Um, let's see, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of cayenne, half a cup of Gouda cheese shredded. Again, you can use whatever cheese you want. I'm using uh, a cheese I found at, um, I think it was Trader Joe's, and it's apple smoked Gouda. So I thought that would be perfect for fall. So I'm gonna see how this works in the fritters. We'll see if Richard likes them. Richard looks scared. <laughs> and then we have oil, of course, uh, to fry in, and then um, sour cream, and if you desire, um, chopped parsley for garnish. So let's get to it. So of course this is, uh, place the zucchini in a colander and sprinkle with salt and keep doing that, let it sit. Just basically what I said about uh, getting the moisture out of the zucchini. So they did that. That's step one. We did all that. So now we need to get into a large bowl, which we will be doing here. Judy Hazel wants to know if you ever made fried I think it's zucchini. Judy Hazel. Hazel. I think. I is it Hazel or Hazel? Is Richard right with Hazel or am I right with Hazel? You can just tell us in the chat. 
Want to know if you made fried zucchini in the air fryer? She just got an air fryer. Yes, I have made zucchini. Hello, zucchini chips in the um, air fryer. I think we did it. I, if I'm not mistaken, on our Star Wars, was it our Star Wars show we did it? I think so. Yeah, it was so good. Um, yeah, but if you want to see it, you can uh, go back to our May the Fourth episode uh, that I did with Living in Diz on, um, well, back in May. <laughs> I think it was like actually May 2nd or something like that. I have that. a $10 super chat from Aww. Tasha Rogers. Tasha. She said, sorry, I'm not able to stick around at MK today. Just wanted to send some love to my sweet friend today. Oh, that's so sweet of you. And oh my gosh, you took time out of your vacation to check in and send a super chat. Tasha, you are amazing. I love you and Sean so much. It was so fun watching Harmonious with you guys the other night from Epcot. Um, it was crazy busy, but I mean, if I could go with anybody, you guys were amazing to watch it with. And, um, I had the best time with you guys and I hope you're enjoying your vacation and go, go enjoy magic kingdom and have a blast. And I will talk to you soon. And I love you guys. All right. So now we're going to put the zucchini into a large bowl like that. Done. And then... We're going to add uh, our flour, eggs, green onions, garlic, onion powder, cayenne, and gouda. So I have here, uh, let's see, we've got the flour. Avery put the link in for your May the 4th special. Oh, Avery, you rock. Thank you so much. Okay, so I said we're using all of this. And then I put the cayenne and the onion powder in here. I'm going to put the minced uh, garlic in, and what else did I say? The green onions, I've got to grab that from the fridge, and the gouda. That's what i got to grab from the fridge. Okay, because I wanted them to stay cold, because I knew we wouldn't get through the, the fritters till near the end. So I wanted to make sure everything stayed good and cold. Ah, uh, oh, man. I've been saying it wrong all this time. Sorry, Judy. Okay, so we're gonna put in our green onions. And we're gonna put in, I said flour, right guys? Yep, flour. And that was uh, two thirds of a cup of flour, all purpose. And now I've got our, um, this is our onion powder, which was a half a teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. I pre-measured just to, you know, I'll go get the garlic. I knew I needed the garlic again. I don't know why I put it away. I need a spoon to spoon it out with. Okay. Here we go. There's our garlic. A little bit more. Okay. There we're good. And onion powder, cayenne, and the gouda cheese. Okay. Gouda cheese. And then we got to get the eggs. Here's our gouda cheese. I shredded this, and it's it's apple smoked. It doesn't smell like apple. You want to try a little and see what you think? It smells gouda. It smells gouda. Avery, he's been listening to your jokes, I think, because he's you're rubbing off on him. Okay. I don't have my spoon to whack it all the cheese out, so I'll just do this. There we go. And then we need two eggs, I think I said, right? Did I say two eggs? Yes. Uh, and that's everything. And then, you know, this is it. It's a one bowl thing, and then we're going to fry them up. That's going to be really great. And our oil should be ready to go when we get over there. So we're going to do a half a cup because that's two eggs. Remember, when you're using your egg beaters, a quarter of egg beaters, one quarter equals one egg. So if you're doing four eggs, that'd be a cup. So we're doing two eggs, so it's a half a cup. I'm just going to dump that in here. Awesome possum. Avery said, LOL, great minds think alike. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to mix this up. Mm. 
and see what we're looking at. Oh, this looks great. I don't know why my cutting board, my cutting board has never moved like it's moving today. I don't know why. It's, did it lose its little rubber feet or something? I don't know. It never did that before. Like the time warp? <laughs> okay. Now that I'm on the last recipe. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to go over here to the um, oil. I'm going to drop just a little bit in to test. That's a good... Are we on stove cam? <laughs> you had one job. No, just kidding. I was going to drop. Uh, this is how you te I test the oil. This is how my grandma taught me and my mom. Just drop a little bit of whatever you're making in the oil. And if it sizzles, it's ready. Yep, it's ready. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do like a little mounds like this. And we're going to just drop them in and fry them up. And we'll have to flip them at some point. Hi, JL. Welcome in. So glad you're here. You definitely need a better cameraman. I definitely need a what? Better cameraman. <laughs> You're funny. Okay. So I don't know how this first batch is coming out. We'll see. Sometimes the first batch of fritters, you know, it's like the first batch of pancakes. You're going to do a couple matches before they come out, right? But we'll see. Um, they're, they're holding together, but I, I need to press on, like compress them. Um, I'm finding it didn't say to do that in the recipe, but I'm finding it's helpful. So I'm going to see how we do here. I'm going to do it like, I don't know, one to two minutes, two to three minutes, maybe a side. You'll know they're ready to flip because um, you'll be able to get underneath them and that needs a little more time. This one looks good. Okay. Are you yawning? You guys, which is yawning? You know why? Because we haven't, you haven't really tasted food yet. You must be hungry. I know. Well, things need to, you know down and bake and all that stuff. Okay, this doesn't want to turn. I don't know why. Okay, we're going to make it turn. There we go. How's this one doing? I'm going to flip it. Flip. It is a slotted spurtle. Someone asked that, didn't they? Because I don't think you would know that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. See, Ashley, you know what you're talking about. You know where it's at. I agree. Okay. I think since you've been behaving yourself until you yawned at me, we can try some zucchini pie. I think I need to feed you. <laughs> All right. Sam, do you want any? Stop it. We're just going to do paper today. <laughs> I'm 
look at that, guys. Mm, looks good. Okay, got the extra zucchini. We'll get two forks. I just want a bite. Cheers. Oops. Nick would love this. So would Steve. This is for you, Steve. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Really good. You done? <laughs> yeah, for now. I'll have a piece after the show for dinner. That's funny. That's really, really yummy. Just saying. Okay. Kevin, I still have to do dishes when it's done. I've been doing most of them. Are you complaining? Kevin Sparrow just said, yes, Richie's an amazing cameraman and probably likes it much more than doing the dishes. <laughs> That was really yummy. I would definitely make it that way again. Since um, I've got a couple of minutes in between, I'll just do more cleanup. So guys, how's your Sunday going? Did any of you um, watch any of the 50th celebration stuff this weekend? You know, there was a lot going on. I went back um, for the first time this year uh, to Magic Kingdom last night and saw Enchantment. Well, what did you think of it? I'm going to be honest. Because I'm, I'm always a straight shooter with you guys. You know that. Um, neither Enchantment or Harmonious lived up to my expectations um, of a Disney show. Uh, for Harmonious, the reason is you have to focus on the barges. And if you're not in the right spot of World Showcase, you can't see it. And I thought in this day and age, you would think they would make a show that was 360 degrees so everybody could see it no matter where they are in World Showcase, and that was very disappointing for me. Um, enchantment, the projections just, even in person, are not anything spectacular. And I actually, in person last night, ended up watching them from in the back where there was nobody because the crowds really, really bother me, as you know. Um, and I didn't anticipate it being as crowded as it was because I thought everyone went the day before. Um, so I just hightailed it out of Main Street as fast as I could and went all the way to the back of the park and uh, watched it from there. I actually took a video, and I'll be posting it, of the um, Enchantment fireworks from where I, I watched them. And I hope you guys like them because I thought it was really beautiful. Jay, I want to know if you got your phone yet. Oh, JL, I am so waiting on my phone. I'm so annoyed. <laughs> Everyone's getting their phones but me. I don't know what happened. I ordered mine directly from Apple. And you would think they would give me my phone first, but no. I don't get mine until the 6th through the 11th. I have to be able to know we started watching it, and then we didn't get to finish it because um, we had to pick Sam up. <laughs> Is it on Hulu? Oh, great. Put this over, get a little more color on it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, sweet. That's the same day the Muppets Halloween special comes out, I think. Okay. So, guys, oh, we're not on stove cam anymore. Oh, hi, guys. So this is uh, our first zucchini fritters. They look really yummy. 
So awesome possum. And our um, uh, zucchini boats have three minutes left on the timer. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone has to make their own opinion. I don't want anyone to go and say, well, Donna said it wasn't good, so it's not good. I encourage everyone to form their own opinion on it. Um, that's just my opinion on it. And that's just my two cents. It's, you know, I want you all to go and, and make your own decision. I think everyone should see it in person and and then, you know, decide if you agree with me or if you, you know, respectfully disagree. And that's perfectly fine. Because I've heard people that really love it and that's awesome. It's just from my perspective and being someone who doesn't want to be, you know, in a crowd if I can avoid that, it, um, I wish we could see it from other places than just right up front in those, you know, couple of locations where it works best. And I'm pushing these down so that they form like a patty. Um, because if you don't, I'm noticing if you don't kind of mound them, um, and I'm trying not to burn myself. Um, they're falling apart. So you need to like make a, form them into like a patty or a fritter. And then gently ease it off your spoon. And I can't believe this says four servings because this is going to serve more than four people. And I use the exact measurements with this one. Okay. All right. Oh, thanks, Marilyn. It's just, you know, for, I think for older folks like me, it's just, we expect different things from Disney. And I wish, it seemed like they were heavily focused on the IP with this and not like making the people feel something or, you know, having the guests walk away with, that was like so incredible. I want to, you know, do so much good for the world and be kind to people. And it just, it just felt flat for me. It was just like, okay, it was a show. It was cool. But where's the, you know, where's the feeling? I just didn't get it. And the music choices, although I love the music for Enchantment, it's not catchy stuff like Happily Ever After that you'll be leaving the park and singing and dancing and, you know, it's kind of orchestral. And that I just think there's a different form for that kind of music. That's just me. I like to be able to sing along to it. And, you know, like I sing the whole Happily Ever soundtrack. It drives Richard nuts. So he's probably happy that's over. But... <laughs> But I, I love that soundtrack so much. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. And the hope, you know? I like leaving there feeling hopeful and, I don't know, just fulfilled. It's just so hard to explain. But I just didn't feel that with these shows. I felt kind of just, not empty, but just numb or indifferent. I don't know. Let's see how these are doing. Oh, thanks, Richard. Okay, guys, so the first zucchini fritters are done. So I'm going to plate one up and get it all pretty. That's what it felt like. It didn't, I mean, and I, I get IP, of course, because that's what Disney is. They're the movies, they're all the things. But I didn't get, like, the classic stuff, too. They could have mixed in the new with the classic and made everybody happy instead of just going for the newer audiences. It's like if you haven't had, you know, children within the last 15 years or so, 
a lot of these songs, I had people saying, what was that? And I'm like, I had to tell them because I watch all the movies. But I was like, yeah, that's from this movie or that movie or, you know. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to top this with a little bit of crema. Um, you can use sour cream. You don't have to use anything if you don't want to. You can use uh, chopped parsley. I'm not going to do the chopped parsley today. It does this have a, yeah. Okay. Oh, now I'm down with that. I heard Gasparillo's has a nice one. Hello, welcome in. Okay, you want to get a picture of it with the dressing on it? I want to try this little bite. Mmm, yummy. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep making these. Okay. Making my hands all really. Okay. You ready to try a zucchini fritter? Toward yeah, for sure. I just felt like, you know, they could have done it so that, like I said, everybody got to enjoy it. Grandkids and their grandparents, as well as generations to come. I think they, they missed the mark. They, they want it. We need unity and unification in, in this, these times that we're in. And I just didn't feel it doing that. Um, which I thought was kind of sad. You don't want the one with the cream? Fine. Well, I do. Mmm. Go with the cream. Okay. It's really good with the crema, guys. Mmm. They're light, too. They're not like a heavy fritter. Yummy. All righty. We have, nope, that's not quite ready. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, yeah, it's funny because for um, fritters, they're surprisingly uh, light in, in texture. Wouldn't you say, Richard? I'm going to see if I have a large slotted because look at what this is doing. I need something better to turn that with. I think my spurtle's too short. Oh, Richard went in for seconds, guys. Oh, you're not starving. You had barbecue for lunch. Didn't you? Six hours ago. So did I. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to fry these up here. And uh, I think what I'm going to do, let's see how these are looking. Oh, this one's done. Great. So you guys could stick in around while I fry these up, or should do you want me to um, get the cake done and taste the zucchini boats and be done? Because I can do whatever you guys want me to do. If you're cool chatting and sticking around, we can get these done because I'm, I'm almost done with them. I have like one or two more batches of them to do. Oh, so the zucchini for the fritters, um, if, if you can dehydrate it, or if I did, what? Read again. For the zucchini fritters. For the fritters also dehydrated. No, they weren't dehydrated. I just, well, sort of, if you count just draining the liquid, I just added salt to it. Um, 
and put paper towels in a colander and then put the zucchini and wrapped it in paper towels for about two to four hours and squeezed all the excess um, liquid out of it. And then I put it in a lock and lock or a storage container and just put it in the fridge. So yeah, not technically dehydrated, but yes, they were sort of dehydrated, but not to the point of crispness. Yeah. Zach said he needs. Don, I need your food in my mouth one day. <laughs> Always look so delicious. Thank you so much, Zach. And UK Disney Keith and Mandy said, we've watched a lot of 50 celebration vlogs and live streams over the last few days. And we totally agree with you, Donna. We also wish they would have had included Walt and Roy in both shows. Yeah, see, that's the thing. In Epcot Forever, one of my favorite things was when we heard Walt's voice. I mean, he's He's the reason Disney exists. And for them to take that out and not replace it with something similar, um, just, I don't know, it didn't like upset me, but it, it just made me kind of sad, um, you know, because I was, it, it's nostalgic and, you know, he, he's history. He is the company. And when you take Walt out of the equation, what are we left with, you know? I think that's one of the reasons I was disappointed also. And, you know, Epcot Forever, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was much more um, easy to watch it because they had more elements to it before the pandemic. They had the kites that would fly in the jet skis, and you could look in a lot of different places and see something. Um, also, I love that it gave a nod. That show just gave a nod to the past as well as the future. And that's what I think it's all about. Because if you forget where you have started from and where you came from, how can you move forward successfully? Um, you know, it just seems like they're losing what started it all. And when you start doing that, it's kind of a dangerous thing to do because you're going to mess with you know, the formula that made the company so successful in the first place. Um, you know, if you remember, you know, back in the 90s, Disney was very uh, customer and guest oriented and centered and wanted the guests to be happy and catered to, as well as making money. Because obviously it's a business when it comes down to it. And, you know, I get that, and they have to make money because if they don't make money, they can't stay in business. I understand that, but I think you can have both. You can cater to your guests and have them happy and give them perks and things and still make money while doing it because when people are getting more, they're more apt to give you more money because they're happier and they're getting something for their dollar. Whereas now I don't feel we're getting as much for a dollar and for me anyway, I notice I'm scaling back because I, I miss that. You know, I want to be treated like, you know, like a guest, like, you know, uh, like I treat you guys, like you're welcome here. I want you to stay. I want you to visit. I want you to come back. And I'm not getting that feeling anymore. It's kind of sad. But that's just me. <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox now. Okay, um, I gotta turn my mic off for one minute because I've gotta blow my nose. <laughs> I don't know why my nose is running, but I've gotta blow my nose and then I gotta wash my hands because I'm blowing my nose. So I'll be right back. Okay. I should be back on, but my blue light is blinking. Is that right, Richard? Okay. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, I'll wash my hands. Get back going. I don't know why my nose was running. Oh, you know why? Because there's cayenne pepper in the um, fritters. Yeah. I was like, I don't know why. I'm not sick or anything. Marilyn said Walt wanted it affordable. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about is families. And that's why I thought it would be so nice if they had incorporated all generations in the shows and not just the newer ones. It feels like they're being left out or phased out. And I don't like that. I want to be able to enjoy the park when I'm 60, 70 years old. I don't want to be pushed out of the park just because they think I'm irrelevant. I mean, I think we're all relevant, all of us. So I think we all should have something to enjoy, you know? Thank you, Pamela. It's just not. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And hopefully, you know, this is just, you know, a phase. And, you know, all companies and businesses go through phases. And hopefully they'll figure it out. And this is a growing pain and it's troubling times. And, you know, they've never been through a pandemic and all that. So I'm hoping, you know, that they get back to the way things were, or at least, you know, a balance somehow of, of you know, compromise. Because um, it just seems like they're taking more and more away and charging more for less. And I mean, people are going to say, well, I can get that, you know, at Universal or I could get that at another park near my house. You know, if you have a Six Flags near you or whatever, or, you know, you could do other things. And, you know, who wants to spend, you know, all their money on Disney on a trip when you could, you know, spend that money and go on like two cruises instead? It's just, you know, they, they really are just really inflating things to a point where people have to make decisions that because it's you know if you have a family of like four or more it's greatly affecting you across the board and I don't think they took that into consideration because when it gets down to it Disney is about the families or it was supposed to be yeah yeah Jan has Disney. hi Jan we're having a Disney discussion <laughs> Nick said, I must say Disney has been on their A game with the cupcakes lately. Mm -hmm. The cookie screen that's all right. <laughs> Nick is saying I'm digressing. But I will say one final thing about the Disney thing and then I'll be done. But I think part of the issue is I don't think they have any more Disney like remaining surviving Disney family members that are like really actively on the board. I don't know if they do or not. But I don't think they do because if they did, they would definitely be having some kind of say in, in what's going on. But that's that's it. But getting back to cupcakes, yes, um, I intend to try all of them. I heard there's Hocus Pocus cupcakes somewhere. Do you know where those are, Sam? Yeah. Oh, they're at Gasparillo's. I'm going to go get some sometime. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try the Halloween treats and, and all that kind of stuff and uh, it's kind of sad we don't have a um, Booty You Parade this year or um, fireworks, but, you know, we'll have some for the Christmas party. So that's that's a plus anyway. And I'm looking for it. Well, I, I'm fortunate. I can see them from my house. So I don't have to buy the ticket to see, see them. I, I can't hear the music or anything, but I can see the fireworks from my house. So that's a plus. <laughs> Zach said, although they did pretty good with the 50th of March. And I think that's because they want to recoup a lot of the money that they lost on the theme parks during the pandemic closure. Um, and that's great. Um, I, I do think releasing it in collections like they're doing is a really smart idea. And that's smart business, what they're doing. But I have noticed like certain things are they're jacking up prices. Um, and that I'm not okay with, like $60 for a magic band, a limited edition. I thought that was a bit much. $99 for a varsity jacket. I was like, come on, Disney. <laughs> Give us a little break. Because, you know, if they make the prices more affordable, people will buy more. I, I don't think they're thinking from a consumer's perspective because we're the ones that spend the money. And for me, I want to get more for my money, not, not less. I'd rather get, you know, 10 pins than only like three because they made them so expensive. 
Hey, Tim. Oh, that sounds great, Tim. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate that very much. Okay. I hope so. Maybe they should just hire me. No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I must say, too, one of the things they really nailed it on, in addition to cupcakes, is the uh, food offerings. The Mr. Toad Burger, although... Um, intriguing it's a bratwurst burger which i thought was kind of odd um but it looks really good um they really went all out last night uh like i said i was back at magic for my first time this year um and my goodness um they had we had a halloween um ow ooh, i burned myself a funnel cake and it was so good. It had M&Ms on it and caramel and cookie crumbs. And it was a lot, though. Sam and I didn't even make a dent in it. Um, but it was yummy. It had ice cream on it. And then we had um, the June buggy non-alcoholic drink. And it's uh, ginger blackberry ginger beer uh, with, like, lemonade and all kinds of stuff in it. And it has a, a special Haunted Mansion straw. It's a paper straw, so you can't save it. But it's really cool. <laughs> And it tasted really good, too. So they nailed it with the food. I'm, I'm impressed with that. And I'm impressed with the merch. And, I'm, you know, the cupcakes and things like that. So, you know, it, it has, you know, the pros and cons. And you just, you, you know, you just got to choose what's right for you, I guess. Right? Got a $10 super chat from Magical News Live. <laughs> Nikki. He said, you know what Walt would love if he was still here? Fluffer Nutter Bar. <laughs> <gasps> Me, too. Who doesn't love a fluffer nutter bars? And I forgot about that. I should make those for you, Nicholas. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't made those in quite a while. Do you guys, uh, you guys in the chat, do you remember when I made the fluffer nutter bars? And if you don't, would you like me to make them again? Because I could incorporate them into my uh, Give Kids a World Christmas Cookie Baking Marathon. So let me know, and I will gladly make those again because they're so yummy. Okay, this cake is almost ready to frost. Okay, so you know what we can do? Um, I'm keeping an eye on these fritters, but um, I'm gonna start on the um, ganache for the cake. And all we need for that is whipping cream and we need a half a cup, one and a quarter cups of semi chocolate Okay, I gotta get my chocolate chips. So we need one and a half cups of chocolate chips and a half a cup of whipping cream. And my chocolate chips are down here somewhere. Ooh, I love it. You guys are so much fun. All right. Let's see. Okay. Sorry, guys. I had my mini chocolate chips out, but not my regular chocolate chips. So I had to get the regular size out for the ganache. Alrighty. Here we go. Let's see if I can flip these. Oh, it's so good. And um, my gosh, I, I don't think I've ever had anything as good as those ever. And the funny thing, guys, <laughs> uh, they use crescent roll dough. <laughs> Everything that's great is made with crescent roll dough, and that's one of them. So <laughs> the full figure. But I love marshmallow and peanut butter and chocolate, and all of those are in fluffer nutter bars. So, yeah. I gotta find a lid. Oh, here's the lid for this. Perfect. Alrighty. 
Here we go. Now I'm thinking I can make this in the microwave, but let me see what it says to do first. Yep, I can do it in the microwave. Place the chocolate chips and heavy cream in the microwave, save full heat for 30 seconds and stir until creamy and melted. So since I'm gonna be making the cake, I think I'm gonna clear this area and then um, make the cake here so they can see it, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. I agree. And uh, my awesome friends, the Jackleys, are going to be coming and cooking with me sometime soon, too. And I'm really looking forward to that. All right. So we need a microwave safe bowl. And I'm just going to check on the fritters again. Yep. Not quite there. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to bring on the cake, cake on over. Okay, guys, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so I got the wax paper underneath to catch all the frosting drips. And I'm going to get a microwave safe bowl. And we're going to put a half a cup of whipping cream and one and a half cups of chocolate chips. So I'm going to measure out everything. Roxanne Simpson said, I can't Hi, wait Roxanne. to eat when I get to Disney next month. Yeah, that's like my favorite pastime at Disney's <laughs> is eating and looking at pins and riding people mover. They've got a lot of great 50th food, I'll say that. And the new confectionery is really nice. It's much more open. But, um, oops. Someone help me in the chat because I think they took the slush machines out. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. But I think they took the slush machines out. But I think you can still get them at Goofy's Goose, Candy Company, but that's not there. Where would you get slushes now? I don't know. Well, now I'm sad. Where are the slushes? I know you can get the Gaston's LeFou's brew thing at Gaston's Tavern. So there's that. <laughs> Joey can assist me anytime. He's my buddy. Okay. I got to find my measuring cup. See how these are doing. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, our fritters are all done, guys. They look amazing. Okay. So, we need a half a cup of. So, has anybody put up Halloween decorations yet? We did. I didn't take any. <laughs> I'm waiting for my new phone. <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Yeah, guys, the fritters came out really, really pretty. I don't know. Are you on stove? Oh, no, you're not on stove cam. Okay, so. Can they see it? Oh, there we go. Aren't they beautiful? You can serve them, you know, with the sour cream. They were really good with the crema, the Mexican crema, which is sour cream, basically. And you can sprinkle extra green onions on top or the chopped parsley or however you want to do it. They're really, really good. Let me put them over here. And see how this is going to do. JL said he's not into Halloween, more into Christmas, but he loves Halloween. I love Christmas. Hi, 
Halloween is, um, I don't like, like, the scary stuff. That, I mean, it doesn't scare me, per se. I just, it's just, just not my thing. But I like, like, the cute stuff. Like, I have a um, Disney um, inflatable out there, and I have a Grogu one, and I have a Mickey bat, and a ghost. So I go for the cute aspect. We're just going to stir this gently until it melts, but it's not quite melted. So we're going to put it back into the um, microwave. Put that there. Oh, you're eating another for there. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. 40 more seconds. Oh, the creme is in the fridge. Yeah. I really like it. It's not like, it's a little bit lighter than sour cream, so I think you'll like it. It's not like thick. It's right there on the top shelf. And it's squeezable. So I like that too. Because you can make your food look pretty. It's not like a dollop. You know, with sour cream, you have to, it's so thick, you have to make like a dollop. Unless you thin it out and put it in a little piping bag or something. Okay, we're just waiting on this uh, ganache. The ganachery, that's right. Today we're the ganachery. How's that? Woo! You can take them on a moon tour, Richard. <laughs> you guys want to go on a field trip? You can take the tripod with you. Oh, this looks yummy. Guys, look at this. It's almost there. I'm going to keep stirring. Oh, my gosh. It's ganache. <laughs> I'm in a rhyming mood today. I don't know why. You want to stir it until it's really smooth and shiny. Like this, see? Whoop. <laughs> this is going to be great. You guys ready? You just spoon it over your cake. And just let it go where it may. And it'll drip down the sides. This made a lot of ganache. But I'm going to use it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be good. And now you know why we put the wax paper on the bottom. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so good. Okay, guys, so I put all the ganache on. See? Okay. And now we just sprinkle with chocolate chips, the mini ones, which I have right here. Yeah. And again, Jackley family, message me. I'll be checking um, as soon as we go off the air because I use my devices to stream on. But, um, yeah, you're more than welcome to come get some leftovers because there's a lot of them. Well, thank you, Jason, and welcome in. So good to see you. Yum. Okay. Cherry, cherry, common. 
of it all. No, it needs to be refrigerated. Not all eat. Um, if it's what? Not all eat. Oh, yes. Leftovers, I would refrigerate. Um, or you can freeze. Uh, this cake will actually freeze up to like six months. So that's a good thing. And you could freeze them in individual portions. So like if you want to bring it for lunch or something or put it in like your kid's lunchbox for a snack or something, to, you know, keep it in the freezer, put it out in their lunchbox or whatever. And by lunchtime, you'll have a fresh piece of cake waiting for you. So, yeah. Okay. So we need to let this sit just for a minute. Um, while we're letting it sit, we have to finish the zucchini boats. We didn't do zucchini boats. You're like, huh? What? You're like, lady, you've been streaming so long. Cut it out. <laughs> That's okay, Richard. You can have a vacation from me later this week. <laughs> Let's see how I'll use it. Did you get you got a picture of the zucchini, right? Yeah. Okay, because we're gonna top, we're gonna finish it off, and we'll take another picture of, it, of the finished. Because we gotta sprinkle a little bit of tomato. And we're gonna sprinkle a little bit more of bacon. And then you're going to come and taste it, but you got to take a picture first. <laughs> there we go. What do you think, Richard? What do you guys think? <laughs> Did you like it with the crema? Yeah, yeah. Told you. <laughs> All right. You good? Yeah. Okay. We can dig into this now. I've been excited for this one. Yeah, okay, you bite. I'll cut my end over here. That's a giant jalapeno popper. We made those too. Mmm. Too big of a bite. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're hungry because we haven't had dinner. Not so good. These are a winner, guys. Yes, very mm -hmm. good. If I made these for you, would you eat them on a weeknight? Probably. Go away. Just go away and eat your fritters. <laughs> I'm gonna eat the cake. Yes, you have sugar running through your veins. I'm gonna set that there for now. I'll have the rest of it for dinner after. Okay. Are you ready for cake? Yeah, Hi, Virginia. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome in. Glad you're here. Okay. Here we go, Richie. The moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't even. Okay, I'm going to go in. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm cutting into the cake. Now, if Richard doesn't like this, there's obviously something wrong with him. Okay, guys. And this will set up more also um, while it's, you know, resting. Because the ganache is really fresh. But we've been streaming for, what, over three hours, so we need more forks. The ganache is yummy. Donna's ganachery. <laughs> okay. You ready for this? It's like zucchini. Mm -mm -mm. I can't even taste the zucchini. It's so good. It's a really good chocolate cake. I like the hints of cinnamon. 
It almost tastes like banana bread to me. Like chocolate banana bread. Mmm. That's really good. It's going to be really good once it sets. Mm-hmm. Everybody come get a Mmm. Okay, guys. Well, we have tackled zucchini. We made zucchini fritters, crescent Italian zucchini pie, stuffed zucchini boats, bacon cheeseburger stuffed zucchini boats, and this beautiful zucchini uh, chocolate cake. So we did find out that you can use just regular cocoa powder. Just make sure it's not like hot cocoa mix. That's got all kinds of weird stuff in it. You want, you know, the Hershey's 100% cocoa. Use that. And, um, or Ghirardelli's or Valrona or whatever. But just make sure it's 100% cocoa. Um, and you should be good. You can use the dark if you can find dark. Um, I use just regular. And I think it's extremely delicious. Um, but I think, I think we were successful with four amazing zucchini dishes. So, woohoo, right? In the words of Dad, Resort TV One, right? Avery said, said Donna should buy the, just buy the canastria. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? I'd hire all of you and we could all like make candy all day and then we could eat candy and oh my gosh, Michelle that would be Quilter fun. Said, of the day, go eat your fritter. <laughs> I know, right? So, guys, this was so much fun. But don't forget, we're going to be live again in two weeks. And guess what we're going to be making, Richard? Guess what our theme is? Drum roll. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. Nope. It's going to be Oktoberfest. <laughs> so, we'll be making all things German. We're going to be making a Black Forest cake. We're going to be making schnitzel. We're going to be making all kinds of things. Uh, pretzel bites and and it's going to be amazing. So be there or be square. We will see you guys in two weeks. And you want to come say goodbye? Or are you eating fritters? I eat all the fritters. <laughs> oh, but it was such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for your super chats and for staying with me for over, what, three hours now? You guys rock. I don't know what I did to deserve you guys in my life, but I'm very blessed. And I thank you for being here. Um, to all my channel members, my new channel members, thank you so much. Welcome in. I love all of you and your support means the world to me. My super mods with the blue wrenches, you guys rock. And I appreciate you guys so much. But for now, we're going to sign out, clean up our kitchen, and hopefully get some food away. So we will see you guys in two weeks. Until then, be kind to each other. Stay safe. And remember, it's always better to be nice and make someone's day. So... Bye, guys. Bye. Why do I look like that?